Hi, and uh, welcome to the 2024 USCTA National League Super Event. Uh, my name is James Stout. I'm a professional here at the Rack and Tennis Club in New York, uh, and I'll be commentating this first match. So this is the third iteration of the uh, this National League format, which is uh, all matches being played in one venue over uh, a few days as opposed to the season-long event that we've had in the past. Uh, this is the second year in a row that the Racket and Tennis Club of New York is, uh, is hosting. This first match we have uh, on the serving side of the court, uh, head, head professional uh, Barney Tanfield, uh, and he will be playing for Team Tambor. His opponent, who's actually now just making his way to the serving side of the court, is uh, assistant professional here in New York, Josh Dodgson. Um, so Josh is playing for Team Grill, which is made up of uh, Pete Dickinson, Tony Hollins, and Team Captain Steve Vergona. Barney Tamfield playing for Team Tambor, which is himself, Adrian Kemp, Noah Motes, and Team Captain Camden Riviere. So this year, the format changed slightly. In previous years, it was in previous years it was uh, as you can see on the screen. Uh, it was uh, based off of the individual clubs. So you had a team from New York, New England, Chicago, uh, Philadelphia. Uh, this year, we decided to uh, mix up the teams, have four captains, as you can see, Camden Riviere, John Lumley, Steve Vergona, and Nikki Howe. We held a draft during the U.S. Open uh, down in Philadelphia where each captain got to pick a second, third, and fourth string player uh, in a specific order, and uh, that made up the teams. So... As you can see, we've got 16 of the top players here in North America, and we are going to be in for a treat over the next three days. Uh, format is uh, one eight-game one eight game set. I believe uh, we're, we're going to be playing uh, one deuce and then 40 all. Always nice at the very first match is the uh, two home pros just to kick it off, you know, try to get the crowd uh, a little hyped. Um, 40, 30. Barney and Josh both been playing pretty well. Um, so this should be should be a good close contest. As you can see, first game going to Deuce. Um, if I was a betting man, I'd say uh, Barney Tanfield with Down, his raw firepower may have a slight edge over Josh, who's a little bit more finessey in his uh, style of play. Um, I have uh, team captain. Uh, for the Daydons, uh, Nikki Howe joining me. Um, Chase, better than the second gallery. Good afternoon, Chase, James, and, and everyone else. Nikki, thank you very much in. for being here. Um, Looking forward to this one. This match or uh, is, uh, is this event in the next few days? Both. A little I mean, bit of both? Yeah. It's a super fun event, and I mean... How cool is it to get to spend uh, three, four days here at New York Racquet Club? Yeah. Unbelievable club. And, um, but yeah, the matches will be great, but especially this one. Very close on paper. Both the New York pros. Um, Little hometown sort yeah. of uh, grudge match, if exactly. you will. Exactly. For bragging rights in the pro shop. Ah, always. <coughs> Unless Barney loses, in which case we, we won't hear Gary. about it ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Um, so we would like to say a huge thank you to everyone that made this event possible. Um, the uh, U.S. Uh, Core Tennis Association uh, have uh, have been the primary sponsors of the National League for years. I mean, I've been playing in it for 17 years, uh, and they've always been a huge contributor. So to the USETA, thank you very much. Uh, to the National Fund contributors, uh, the gentlemen that raise a paddle, not only during the... Um, annual dinner in December, but also who, uh, who generously uh, supported to, uh, to this fund. Um, it makes a huge difference just uh, where, you know, prize money for all national events in the U.S. just get topped up, um, which is greatly appreciated by the professionals. Uh, we'd like to thank the Racket and Tennis Club uh, for hosting. Um, it's, uh, it's a big undertaking. Um, we take over all of the courts, both courts, for, uh, for pretty much uh, three, four days nonstop. Um, and so we're just very, very grateful for uh, the membership to you know, allow this event to take place and for hosting all of us professionals. Uh, to the U.S. Uh, Court Tennis Preservation Foundation, Again, another wonderful foundation that uh, is uh, always looking to help grow the game of court tennis here in the States, whether that's through uh, the junior program, um, national tournaments, uh, helping through prize money, appearance money, um, you know, all of, all of these groups have made this event possible uh, and not only possible but one of the uh, one of the best events uh, on our calendar as professionals here in North America and then lastly just to the individual members that uh, stepped up either playing in the pro-am or as uh, patrons and supporters um, yeah, a huge huge thank you and hopefully we'll see most of you uh, out in the uh, in the galleries uh, over the next two days. 15 so Dowdy. Back to the match, Nikki. Yeah. Um, uh, well, 1 0, 15 0. So <laughs> nothing in it, right? If, uh, you know, as, as you being a team captain, what's your, what's your sort of approach here with your players? What are you sort of telling them to go out and focus on? What are the goals for the week? Have you, have you talked about that with your team? Uh, a little bit. We've talked about our plans in, in for tonight. Uh, can't really give away too much as, as we're playing against you, Jerry. Um, that's a shame. <laughs> um, I was hoping but to nice get something, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but we, we, we're up against it tonight. I think, uh, if we're honest, on paper, team winning galley looks unbelievable, unbelievably strong. Uh, yeah, you've got two major winners in there, and also Connor Meadows, a very, very good doubles player. Solid player. Yeah. But then, you know, you've got, uh, you know, yourself uh, as an open champion, uh, young Freddie Bristow, who I don't think anyone in the world sort of wants to wants to play against. Um, uh, super talent. Young yeah. enthusiasm and smashes the ball around. Yeah. And we've got Fari Leon, who can play, who you, oh, you'll absolutely. get to enjoy that. Uh, you and Leon a little bit later. I'll be on the receiving end <laughs> of the punishing, luckily only 40 minute uh, <laughs> matchup, hopefully. Uh, and then uh, a good one to finish the night uh, between Ben Stein and uh, Robbie, and Robbie White. Yeah. Let's go team yeah. grill. It was good to see Robbie out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you were, uh, if you had to make a prediction for this match, we've got, uh, we've got Barney Tanfield versus Josh, followed by Adrian Kemp versus Pete Dickinson, and then Candon and Noah Motes versus uh, Steve Ragona and Tony Hollins. Yeah. Who do you think uh, has a slight, slight advantage? Well, yeah, 
Sadio, second chase is one and two. The grill there. Um, well, you know, it's always hard to root against Camden whenever he's out there. Yeah, true. Um, and Noah's got a lot of firepower. Obviously, Steve's a superb doubles player, so it'll be interesting. Lost the um, chase, 40-30. haven't seen Pete play re recently. Is he, is he getting on court? Is he yeah. improving? Yeah, he has been. Um, so he's been... Uh, it's a pressure on AJ for that one? Uh, I would actually say yes. You know, Pete's got nothing to lose. Uh, second carry, 40, 30. Uh, both playing on their home court. Um, I think it will be an exciting matchup. Pete's definitely been putting in some time. Adrian, you know, experienced. Uh, Ever the showman out there. Yeah, Always it, entertaining it, oh, to watch. Okay, right. Who doesn't love watching someone run up a side <laughs> wall? Yeah. to the receiver. Volleyable. Chase is the uh, second gallery. Yeah. No, I think be good. There's lots of good matches. So yeah, tune a lot of in, good comment. I mean, no one's more exciting to watch, let's be honest, than you, Staley. The man of many racket skills. It's, it's a treat that you still turn up and play court tennis now and then. So it's always fun to watch you play. Hey, I, I appreciate you saying that, Nikki. It uh, doesn't always feel that way, you know, when you're out there and you're just sort of getting worked uh, like like I was last year when we played in this event. Um, you know, a ton of fun, but I was playing against like yourself, um, John, Cam. So this point, scores and, juice. Uh, it was sort of a, a nice little eye-opener of just what it takes to play at the top level that you guys do uh, week in and week out. Um, kind of you to say, but your talent is amazing to watch. So. Someone that plays once a year, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> I played twice last week, so oh, you've been training. Oh, watch, oh. Out, watch out, boys. <laughs> Coming for you. Uh, so uh, hit Leon. Advantage. <laughs> what, what are, they play? are they playing one deuce? And advantage? Uh, they're playing one deuce uh, and then 40 all. Yeah. Um, so how's your, uh, how's your season been? It's been still up and down. Uh, but early, like actually this season for me is starting in January again. Games to serve uh, two games, one. I like to reset and I go year by year rather than the real tennis calendar. Because calendar, yeah. I sort of go on the world championship points race. Yeah. So that's how I sort of set set up my 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 years, um, or set up my calendar for yeah. playing tournaments. So Australian Open was good. Played really well. I lost to John in four. Yeah. Played a couple of really good sets and yeah. just you know, ended up being too strong in the end. But I liked the way I played. I had a very good win against Kieran Booth, who was in a lot of form. Yeah, he was. I won that one in straight. Yeah. Um, and then US Open uh, came up against Steve and ended up being too good in that one for me. His old court down His old court, very good. Yeah, um, yeah, very good. Yeah. Um, yes, 30 First time I played a match going on at nearly midnight was a couple was of days before. Yeah. yeah, it was like the day before. As we had a uh, lot of close matches. One court and, you know, you a lot of close matches, yeah. 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 You always dreading that you, if you're the last player in that field, you're like, oh no. Yeah. How late is this yeah. going to be? We got two one, Josh. Looking for a little break here. So three one. Chase better than four oh. yards. These balls are fast, so Bunny will be tough to deal with. Yeah. Did you make any of these balls, Daddy? I uh, fortunately for everyone, I did not. <laughs> um, I leave that to the uh, to the experts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when is the last time you made a ball? Nikki, is this uh, <laughs> has Barney been asking you to to bring this up? <laughs> no. It's 40, 50, it was the probably receiver. been the chase is over better than years. four yards. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was something I was smart enough to sort of talk my way out of having to do Both. as part of my job. Smart. Uh, it's never ending. No, nah. no. Nah. Which is part of the reason why I was like, you know what? I need to try to get this to stop. Uh, yeah. Thirty forty. Time. You made a good show. choice. Yeah. All right, 30-40. Okay, 30-40, big game here for Barney. Again, in the uh, eight-game eight, eight pro set, you don't really want your opponent to go up uh, too much early because, you know, in a best-of-three set match, right, it's sort of like, okay, you can give up the first set and still be very much in the match. Yeah. In eight games, it's you've got to be ready to go from the start. Yeah, you've got to try and stop your opponent having too much of a hot start. Yeah. So you've just got to fight hey, for it. Yeah. Back to Juice. 
found it very interesting. We were uh, Chase, more than the pros were treated to a uh, discussion with uh, Dan Lakaitis, who's a uh, uh, professional in his field when it comes to um, advantage one chase uh, sports psychology. Um, and just, you know, peak performance, playing at your best. Uh, and he spoke to us, uh, he spoke to us this afternoon. Um, it'd be interesting to see, you know, these guys, if, if they, they do implement sort of any of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Part of it was sort of like the breathing of being able to reset, trying to stay positive, you know, so for Reco everyone. Yeah, recognizing the situation. The for everyone uh, out there the listening. The last uh, yeah, it's trying to stay positive. You know, when you're on court, let's say you've got a good chase in hand, right, of three yards or what have you. It's not sort of being nervous game or anxious. That's a huge game for Barney from 40-15 yeah. down. Looking at going 2-1. Three, one. One. Yeah. Back to two all. I've got to say, Josh is not the fastest player around there. He won't, he won't rush any points. Of course not. <laughs> Chase worse than three yards. Thank you. No strokes, one chase. Uh, likes to show. Josh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a showman oh, too. Yeah. You got a couple of them in that pro shop. Yeah. <laughs> Good hitting. Very nice from Barney. Just solid. Good targets. So which of your uh, which of your matches would you, are you most excited for? For me? Yeah. I'm looking, got, I'm looking forward to looking forward to them all. I'm looking forward to getting out of right. Robbie. Never thought I'd get a chance to play doubles with Robbie. And also, well, tonight as well, young Freddie. Yeah. Watching his talent and yeah. getting to be on the same side. I uh, Actually, Rob and I uh, were outplayed in the end in the US Open doubles. doubles. Um, against him and Barney. Uh, Barney they yeah. played superbly well. Yeah. Um, caught us by surprise. And yeah, fully deserving of the victory. Yeah. Um, so Freddie's home court. You know, yeah, take nothing away. Barney played good. They played really well on the big yeah. points. I think the two sets that we won, we were just good. Yeah. And, but then they, the, the three sets that they won, we didn't really, can't really say, uh, we gave it to them. Yeah. Like, yeah, they played well. They hit shots and yeah. found dead ons, and it was quite impressive, especially right at the end. Yeah. You'd think um, that sort of situation, getting to have a big upset, the they might start to break down near yeah. the end, but it never happened. And they're three fully three deserving. So it is interesting. You saw there on the uh, changeover, Steve uh, coaching captain coaching uh, Josh and you've got uh, you've got Camden having a little word with Barney how easy is it to uh, sort of step into that coaching role with you know other professionals and sort of dissect their game try to give them some pointers and you know, is it easy do you enjoy that aspect of it and well I haven't had really a chance to do it but I'm looking forward to doing it so sometimes you know you've watched matches just in your, and you want to like give someone yeah. sort of like you can see what's yeah. going on if they change this up it might might turn the match yeah so yeah I look forward to that um, good shot you know, good helping, job. helping my teammates it was yeah. a great shot but also the way you play is going to be very hard if, if you get off to a flying start you might Liam might be looking for answers and Chase the, second <laughs> the way you play I, I, sometimes I might be I, I don't know what I can do to help <laughs> <laughs> high soft yeah. into the middle of the yeah. court and just give me too much time and yeah too, too much to make him think <laughs> about it yeah. slow it down i can hit the ball yeah. to the top of the net as well as anyone <laughs> <laughs> all right i think every is every game going to the server chase I, is better has, yeah. than a second gallery this advantage josh better than second Good game there from Josh to turn it around after losing the, uh, Three games to two. the previous game. The so the format here is uh, 
I was slightly incorrect. Uh, the singles is one eight game set. Wow. Good heat. That ball was moving quick. Yeah. Um, the doubles is best of three sets. If it does go to a third set, we're going to start three games all. Uh, same thing for both, though, where we play one deuce and then 40 or one point. Couple of rules. Uh, you are allowed to coach from the side gallery. That's permitted. Is that not permitted in uh, regular tournaments? Not in, not in court tennis. You're not allowed to coach? No. Ah, as far as I'm aware. I mean, I've been coaching from uh, <laughs> you know, the door for years. <laughs> yeah, but people didn't take your advice seriously. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why would they? They thought you were talking <laughs> rackets or squash. Yeah. Hit as many walls as possible, yeah. I guess. Doesn't count as proper coaching. See so if you can hit a double boast. <laughs> yeah. so that, no, no, he's just talking squash. Um, uh, each right. team is allowed to receive uh, a one-minute timeout per match uh, to sort of like reset if they want. So that timeout, do you want your player to call it or do you want to call it? I guess you want sort of... 4-2. Game to seven. He needs four I games used it two. last year yeah. where I felt I needed a break and yeah. so I, I sort of called the timeout and then got my team around. Um, <coughs> Just where, you know, I think I was a little bit tired, a um, little bit tired, just needed a little break to sort of reset. Um, is that because you played I'd five be hours of rackets up. before? Maybe, maybe one or two. Um, but I'd also be happy if, like, you know, my captain sort of Steps was like, hey, in. yeah, like, let's have a good break here, let's sit down, reset, um, oh. talk about what we need to do, especially if he sees something sort of or thinks that like, you know, I'm just on the wrong path. Right? Yeah. Like I'm just sort of going through. Just trying to break momentum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, it's a good time to use it if your opponent gets off to a hot start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's use yeah. it, let's slow it down. Yeah, like, you know, Josh here going four two up. I think I think this is a game where if Barney loses this game, slow it down. Like, I, if, and I was camped in, I'd step in and just say, hey, let's, let's have a minute. Yeah. Yeah, good, cool. Yeah. Be fun if it gets to seven all, no one's used it. Oh, can you imagine both of yeah. them. Both of them taking a little uh, little time out. So Nikki, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself. Where where are you uh, where are you based? I'm in uh, South Carolina, oh, uh, Aiken wonderful. Tennis Aiken. Club. Fantastic. Yeah, got a great group of members. Yeah. Who've just welcomed me from day Sala one. Um, the yeah, the other clubs just got busier since I've been there, which is nice. Nice. Uh, How many sort of active players do you think you have? I think it's just a sort of unique structure with the membership, but I probably I have over 60, 60, 70 playing regularly. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, around yeah, 60. Court, court's busy. So certainly Monday to Friday. Yeah. I've created some club championships this year, which they haven't had in a number of years. So that's been fun, and people playing handicaps that they didn't know existed. Yeah. People come in and watch them, so that's great. It's huge. Um, yeah. So it's been fun, and uh, the weather's certainly a lot better than the north. Plus the chase so, yeah, yeah, we'll play golf all year round. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I've, uh, just uh, joined a, a golf club, so with Chase some good practice facilities. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Next one. Can't, can't, you can't. <laughs> well, one thing is, no, you can't show interest in, in wanting to join. Of course. Yeah. But no one knows how you get to be yeah. there. <laughs> uh, well, Barney's fighting back well in this game. 40 yeah, this love. This is good. Got some coaching from Cam. Yeah. No need to take the one minute break. Yeah. 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 Came out to that serve. It was there to yeah. be hit. So how long have you been in uh, Aiken? Been in Aiken since uh, January last year. So a little over a year. Yeah, sweet. Uh, settled in well. Uh, yeah, definitely enjoying it. Very happy to be back in America. I uh, did miss it when I left. Yeah, George you were up in, uh, up in Newport, right? Yeah, I love Newport. But oh, lovely shot there. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's looking like going for all. Um, but Bordeaux was a great opportunity to just, you know, 
to give myself a chance at running a brand new club in the city I was born in. Yeah. Uh, got to speak French, but um, when I can, uh, you know, put out the offer, I was very interested and got talking with the president, Michael Sullivan. And yeah, from there it was a no-brainer when they offered the job. I was excited and I mean, yeah, superb club to be at. With just how friendly and welcoming they've been from, yeah, as I said, from day one. Yeah. It's a very hospitable, hospitable place to be, the South. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's flown by, to be honest. That's great. Oh, nice shot down the line. Yeah, there from Barney. Yeah, two chases, Pointing for a stroke, one in a stroke there, but no. So let's Put say, let's say that you're, you're Josh here, right? You're playing against a guy who, you know, likes pace, likes hitting the ball around hard, you know, what, how would you sort of approach that? Do you just try to, you know, take the pace off, push it around, get him moving? Do you sort of just go out and play your regular type of game? I, I definitely, like, where is he going to be most aggressive from? Return of serve. So definitely take my time Both. thinking about my serve. Yeah. And just try and give him balls that you shouldn't really force on and be like, all right, if you can hit it from there, good for you. But yeah, I'd rather it. you do that than give you the balls to yeah. hit. Make it a tough, like a really, really good yeah. shot as opposed to, uh, you know, a good yeah. shot from a generous location. Yeah. So definitely slow serves, high, two. slow, take my time. Yeah. Um, yeah, just force them into forcing balls because that's what they want to do. That yeah. There'll be balls there that they shouldn't be. And be ready for it, expect the force. Oh, Sort of soak up that first ball. Yeah. Then they get frustrated yeah. when you've got it back. It's a little similar to like when you play against, say, like a Chisholm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, loves hanging, hanging, on, hanging at the uh, receiving side of the court. Um, and sort of just like attacking. Yeah. From there. The problem with Chisholm, man, he's right there with cut body too. Yeah. Good forces, yeah. yeah. Really Sadio Gent, one chase. At times. It right. feels like another big game here. 4-3, 30. Yeah. Oh. Couple good, couple good chases here in Josh's yeah. favor. Now, Stad, are you still uh, number one in the world at double squash? Uh, you no, had it for a while. I, I did. That's um, pretty cool. Currently three. Uh, my partner's like two. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, good spot to be yeah, in, good right? Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, currently three. We, we do have uh, the biggest event of the season coming up. It's actually, we're hosting the Kellner Cup. It's uh, April 11th to 15th. Uh, how many matches, if you make a final, would you end up playing? Uh, so it's a it's a 32 draw, but yeah. like the top four seeds get sort of vibe yeah. on first. Um, and so for us, it's round of 16 onwards, um, and then you always have uh, you always have like pro ams, pro am matches alongside uh, okay. the pro the pro event. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you're probably playing anywhere from, you know, six to seven matches, I'd say, on a tournament weekend. That's a lot. Yeah. You enjoying it? Oh, I love it. Right? It's just, yeah. Do you miss I'd rackets at all? That was another yeah. one. World number one and cha world yeah. champion. Eh? I, I love doubles, right? Like yeah. any of these sports. Court tennis, rackets, squash, doubles is... One, it's a little easier on the body. Yeah. Uh, two, I find it's actually a oh, great shot. That's a superb shot. A little bit more exciting, a little bit more sort of... Yeah. Um, Doubles is great to watch. Skillful, yeah. I find, than, you know, singles, it's like, okay, but if you're in good shape, that counts for a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah in doubles, it's... It's a little bit more unpredictable. You're going to get good rally, yeah. and you can get the upset. Yeah, exactly. And you're always going to get some good rallies, which makes it exciting. Yeah. So. Uh, 
I nearly I tried to get you out for the US Open. I know. Nikki, so I, I know. could get you out of retirement. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thought I it was close enough. I was like, oh, this <laughs> Philly's not too far. I know. It was, uh, we had, uh, we had a tournament here that I was running the same weekend. Otherwise, game we points. Could have been <laughs> That big point, 40 all. There we go, huge. See, that's a good, good serve. Great serve there from Josh, right? Yeah. Oh! That's going 5 3. 5 games to 3. Good shot there from Josh. All started with a great serve. Uh, I think. Josh came into this match knowing that he had to try to keep his serve a little shorter. Um, you know, get Barney hitting that ball before the back wall. Just makes it a little harder to force. Oh, just missed the galleries there, Josh. Oh, nice shot. 30, love. Big couple points here. Oh, yeah. Josh looking very nice. Yeah. yeah. Always buttons up that shirt. Yeah. He does look sharp. Yeah. Nothing out of place. Yeah. He's into his fashion. So Josh's team is Team Grill. As it says, I guess, on there. Yeah. Um, looking to put Team Grill 1 0 up for the night. Yeah, this would be good for, uh, for Steve. For Steve. As good as Steve is, you still slightly favor Cam Noah for that, for that doubles with Noah's firepower. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I'd say. Maybe 10 years ago or so, I'd say that, you know, Steve was I'd say Steve was probably the best doubles player 40, like in the world. Oh yeah, He's unbelievable. Fire, Six fire times power. doubles world oh. champion. His so, precision, so smart, everything yeah. like, and you know, you, you don't lose, you don't drop off from that. Um, but I definitely think Camden now has got that slight little edge just with consistency. And yeah, he, I mean, he's the reigning doubles world champion. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. it helps his partner hit the ball super hard. Six Noah. Games, yeah. Three. So yeah. Th these balls will help that. Um, <laughs> there's a slight error in the uh, program. Uh, Josh Dodson, best handicap listed as plus 2.6. It might be his doubles, he's is that claiming. His doubles? Potentially. Could be. But ah, there I you go. Yeah. But don't know that it does it not clear they're yeah, playing just singles too. Just, just picking the best <laughs> one, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right. Make us all look a little <laughs> bit better than we are. <laughs> what's yours? Uh, what's yours listed as? Uh, the lowest of the top guys, oh. even lower than yours, plus yeah, nine point two. Mine's plus five. five. Very it's nice. good for me. But you, is that right now? Is that pretty no, close? It's, it's pretty close. Uh, yeah. It's down to plus six point five. Yeah. Oh, close enough. It is what it is. It's not that many pluses in the world left anymore. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you look at you, it's a yeah, big drop. Plus 9.2. Yeah. <laughs> but well, when you don't play, you just get, you get automatically go out two each year. I know. <laughs> well, you're just trying to work on playing the, uh, what is it, below Bel zero. Below zero, yeah. yeah it's nice. I know your game. Work, works well. <laughs> uh, Josh has taken that break, 6 3. Yeah, this is, this is tough now for Barney. Yeah. See, that's uh, where Barney could reset if it was a set. Yeah. But now Josh is only two games yeah. away. Josh can sort of go game for game here yeah. with Barney and be in a great position. Mm. Um, yeah. We're not judging the captains, but if we were, I'd say opportunity missed by Camden to just sort of use time that 6-3 as yeah. a sort of like... You can still call the timeout now, Freddie Love. Can, can you, you do it, uh, it, it mid-game? That's interesting. It doesn't say. Any time... At any time, yeah. wow, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that, that'd be a great time to do, wouldn't it? Oh. 
doesn't he? <laughs> Could you do it during a point? Yeah, that's <laughs> just walk out again. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> didn't specify. Oh. oh, well played, Josh. Here we go. Josh oh. covering a lot of court. Yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, I might do it. I, I get a chance as captain. Josh is going to take his time here. No rush to get back and serve. Yeah, 13 serve lead, one chase. Josh out here moving around like he doesn't have a newborn child at home. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of children, how's your little one doing? Uh, yeah, good. How uh, old now? Just turned two. Um, very happy. Yeah. Loves playing, loves sort of running around, being active. It's uh, tiring, but <laughs> very enjoyable, as I'm sure Barney and Josh can both attest to. It's tough for Barney to get back in. There we go. Come on, Barney. Time out would be good. You don't want to go 7-3 down. Nah. But again, you've had like two rallies in a row where Josh has been doing a lot of court coverage. Yeah. You know, if you do take yep. an extended break, you're sort of giving him a time to to reset, to catch his breath. Yeah. Um, but they're taking a timeout. They've both gone off the court. Yeah. Is it a timeout or I don't is know. it now? Because I, I feel like we would have heard. Are we, I mean, Josh isn't the quickest. Yeah. Yeah. Just grabbing it. Oh. I need to add this creature for me. Let's go, Barney. 40-15 to the receiver. The chase is better than two yards. Pretty good turnout here from, uh, from the R and T crowd, <laughs> trying to get behind their uh, trying to get behind their pros. Chase off by two. Oh, that's a Boy, good 15 turn. Leads. Big point there. Well done, Josh. Oh, he's got, there. He's got it. No oh. reach. Oh. Oh, oh, that's, that's delicate. Shot. That is delicate. What a shot from Barney. That could be a huge point. No, get Jason that. Cut that off. Two yards, 40, 30. How do you have like option today? What's that? There's been their choices today, just yeah. both of them. Yeah. Step in the volley, volley boast. Yeah, both comfortable out there. Yeah. Josh especially, like his ability to volley force, cut volley, that volley boast. You know, keeping both guys sort of on their toes and yeah. having to wait to see before for they Saba. react. Chase is better than two yards. I was going to say, how do you like playing on this court? I like the New York court. Yeah. It's a good cut volley. It's fast. I haven't played on uh, in Melbourne, but oh, oh Melbourne, Melbourne's a really great court. Is it? It's just so true. Yeah. So, don't get any really weird bounces. It's good to serve a railroad. Four cuts down, nice. Yeah, shape. yeah. The yeah. reward, yeah, reward's good for the cut. Yeah. So, and the, game and the good thing about their, their courts is, oh, timeout used. Timeout. Here we go. Okay, one minute time has started. Camden Jeff. making a big deal there of his ti team timeout, although yeah. I would say. Josh looked confused. A little later than. Uh, we, we thought we should have done it at 6 3, but okay, better late yeah, than never. Five <laughs> if I was Josh, I'd let them play one point and then go timeout. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Get the get mind, get games. The mind yeah. games going, right? Yeah. Don't stir it up to Oh, we've even got Tony in there now. This is, yeah. I do kind of like this, uh, the different dynamic of it not just being like, okay, you know, Team New York, uh, Team Philadelphia, yeah, mixing it up. And it's good, yeah, because we get to hang out with each other. Yeah, exactly. You know, be part of a team with getting guys you don't always yeah. work with rather than have to play against each other. Yeah, get to hear some different perspectives. 15 uh, seconds. 
it keeps everyone sort of engaged. And with the draft well. format, you were you were you were hotly Thank sought you. after, Stoudy. So she got five more seconds. A little disappointed I wasn't in the uh, third or fourth string. Right <laughs> I, I, I should be. Yeah, that's All right, not well true. <laughs> so the lead, seven games who was your uh, Who was your first pick, first choice? Uh, well, in the first round, I got Robbie Whitehouse. Yeah. And then and only got f one first round pick. Yeah. Um, and who did you use for that? Uh, so hopefully, it didn't make anyone out. feel bad. It was a tough choice. Um, but I went for Freddie Bristow. For Freddie, yeah. So I wanted to play with young Freddie. Yeah. And see what he's got. So I wanted on my team, especially after he, um, him, Barney and him taking us down. Yeah. That's 15 all. Be nice to have on my team. Get him on your side, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the, they're all even, all the groups. Is a yeah. 2B, 2A, so it was actually tough to yeah. And 1A. But I would have liked to have had you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Chase worse than the last Gary's two chases. You get pace from nowhere, Barney. That is, yeah, his, his wrist strength yeah. in all of the sports squash, rackets. Uh, worse than the first Gary. It's frightening. Yeah. Like, you hit a good serve that sort of you know, six inches off of the backboard and his ability to turn that straight at, at speed. Has he hit it one of the hardest in rackets, would you say? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, when he tees off on the ball, yeah, everyone just sort of goes, you see him, like, he doesn't, he doesn't shy away yeah. from it, right? You see it coming, but there's still nothing you can do. Good call there. John Lumley, team captain for winning gallery in the marker's box. Yeah, he's fighting Gary back. Time. Thanks, yeah, managed to defend worse than first. Than That's a good win Gary. for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's well played. Covered that ball well. 40 15. I'm sure Josh loves this format as well of the uh, eight game pro set. He's been known to cramp up yes. uh, in a uh, best of three Chase or best of five match. That Gary. is true. Running around diving That's and then sort yeah. of comes up like yeah. holding holding the, uh, the yeah. thigh or the, uh, yeah. the quad. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if it's for the show as well. Gives to entertain the crowd. Yeah. 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 All the dramatics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get a few of your, your members coming in tonight? What's the response to be like? Uh, you know, day, day one, I th you know, thinking back to last year, um, uh, I think Wednesday was definitely the uh, best attendance that we had. Um, now that being said, there's, I mean, that's a pretty good gallery back there. It is a good gallery. That team talk, that timeout worked. Yeah. At least won that game. Now you just need Josh to call a timeout. Chase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seven, two um. yards, no strokes, one chase. But yeah, I think uh, I think having the Tanfield dodged in first match of the event. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's no just the way to bring it out. Smart scheduling yeah. to try to well, get one sort of back to back with AJ and Pete. AJ, yeah. Yeah. Two New Yorkers. And they'll surely stay around to watch you play. They love watching you play. It's just a treat once a year. They get to see you on a court tennis court. No. <laughs> it's like those Legends tours. Score is level. First chase is better than two yards. Can't wait to compete <laughs> in the over 40s next year. <laughs> oh, God. Who was that? Was that, was that Rocky or no, I lost who won the, the over 40s this year? Two. I don't know. 15 after like the server, Chase better than the last Gary time. I think the best not that long ago. Um. 
Better than the last gallery. Good shot there from Josh. Okay, 15 all. Big point here from Barney. He's got to really make sure that he doesn't give Josh 30, 15. a chance to swing freely to, to close out the game. Yeah. You know, if he's down 40, 15, you know, he'll get a little bit tight. Um, you know, if he's 30, 15, he can sort of swing away on this point, right? Nothing to lose. Good serve there. So what other uh, events do you have coming up after this? Uh, well, quite so we've got the World Doubles Championship in Chicago. So nice. very excited to play for that. So Playing with, uh, with Rob Fay. Fantastic. I think he's been doing a bit of training. Yeah. Um, yeah, as soon as I get back, it's just going to be uh, just training for that, really, which is sort of different than I normally train for no other tournaments because it'd be more singles uh, focused, yeah. but this yeah. I'll be doing specifically when doubles focused training. When is that? Uh, end of February, 24th to the 29th of April. Um, oh, nice, yeah. Uh, Steve Chicago raised a great pot. Yeah. And it looks like he sold almost all the tickets. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be exciting. Um, yeah, so looking forward to playing with Rob. Uh, 40, 15, even though we're two seven, seeds, you'd seven, have definitely Steve and John as favorites yeah. over us. Um, have fun, nothing to lose. Yeah. We won't have the home crowd, but <laughs> still be great to play in Chicago. Yeah. There we go, 40-15 match point. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Game set match point play Josh. We won't hear about it in the first half. Team Grill there with Josh Dobson getting the first win of the 2024 okay, National go. League yeah. Super yeah. Event. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. We've got... Uh, thank you for listening to us. <laughs> we've got uh, just five more matches tonight. Uh, next one coming up in a little bit will be Adrian Kemp and Pete Dickinson. Uh, I'm James Stout. I'm Nikki Hell. Thank you very much for tuning in. Good night.
timing of their start. One against that second group of 40 minutes. So even if it's seven or two. Okay. Uh, yeah, we How are you feeling, boys? Okay. Uh, I'm Connor tonight. Do you know Connor? Yeah, we met him pretty early. Yeah. He, where are you? Where are you doing? Uh, he was in uh, everywhere. Philly, Newport. Yeah, I came as a fellow a couple of years ago. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. First time I've been back. Jesus. 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 I thought we were teammates. Second match of the uh, tie between Team Grill and Team Campbell. Adrian Kemp to serve. And P. Diddy Dickinson to receive. Good luck. Bravo. Okay. I'm good to go. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the second match of the day of Tambor versus Grill. We have Adrian Kent for Team Tambor and uh, Pete Dickinson for Team Grill. So again, another home um, home club matchup with uh, PC and AJ, both residing in New York. Should be a good one we have here. Got Pete there. Didn't quite read that. So both of them should be quite accustomed to the niches on the court um, and the uh, pace of these small balls. Uh, should be a good match. PC improving drastically uh, since moving to New York. And uh, see how he gets on. A little loose there from Pete. 40-15. And uh, AJ taking a commanding leave. So to the format of the uh, all the singles matches this week are all first to eight games. So the most important thing here is to really get to a good yeah. start. Because um, it's go two, three love down. Uh, 
quickly go uh, um, against you. So Pete's got to do a big job here of uh, getting back into this and sticking on that service end and getting some points. Receiver leads 40-15, has a chase better than the second. Just slightly misread there, and that's a good fat okay. boost from Mr. Adrian Kemp. Oh. Okay, I have a fellow commentator by my side. Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Tim Wells, member of the Rack oh. in tennis. Uh, hoping to watch some good tennis here. Yeah, we got some good start from Adrian here, but. Should be some good stuff um, throughout the weekend and this match. Um, so what are your thoughts on this one? Obviously being a member of the Rack Club, are you probably quite familiar with the two of these guys? I mean, I think age has them, but you know, love an underdog story, we'd love to see Pete pull it out. Uh, yeah, I think most people would as well. Petey's probably, well, they're both home favorites, but Petey's got a special place in my heart, being a, a fellow in Philly for a bit uh, before coming here. So we'll see what he can do. So did you guys play a lot when he? Yeah, we, we played loads. Uh, we played almost like every other day. It was uh, it was great. Uh, me and Petey, it was sad to see him see him come here, but um, sure, we play again quite soon. Oh. Yeah. He's just got to take away those unforced errors. Consistency uh, is key. Yeah, it is. So who normally coaches you then when you're on the tennis court? Who's Josh normally. Josh, okay. Yeah. So you don't really care about either of these two. Yeah, right? well, you know. Yeah. Again, so special places in heart for well, both. But jo yeah. Josh got the first win of the day against Barney. Um, so Team Grill is one up. And the format of it is singles matches are only worth one point and the doubles are two points. So it should be a big match uh, for oh! Pete to win. Although it's looking like AJ's taking a commanding lead and these eight game sets are just it's kind of it kind of once you get down you yeah. know it's really hard to you know just pick it up mid game yeah yeah it is okay. yeah. So again those unforced Seven, errors three games to lock. We, we might not be in the booth for too long uh, yeah i know right <laughs> so this is this your first experience commentating have you uh oh yeah the fir first, first one you know First of many, hopefully. Uh, exactly, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, once you get Good stuck to the booth, you almost get addicted. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see more of you uh, throughout the week, Tim. Love that. And then, uh, yeah, I know you got your doubles match, uh, what is it, later tonight? Uh, yeah, so we got an exciting one, winning gallery versus the Dead On. Uh, me and Nikki Howell versus John Lumley and Conor Medlow. The uh, scheduled time is 6.20, but... Well, actually, this match might bring us back on time. Maybe, maybe. They, you know, if anything, that's that's really what they're all about. They they, they know that the Barney and Josh match ran late, you know, yeah. so they're, they're trying they're to get everything back up, on yeah, track. No, that's what proper New York pros do. They know how to do it well. Exactly. Proper hosts. Exactly. Don't want anyone wasting. Yeah. No, Pete's just got to get back into this. He, he's an interesting player, Pete. I play with him a lot, and he has some incredible shots sometimes, but then he just makes the easiest errors. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what Pete's really got to work on. Because I feel like he has the speed. Like, he, yeah. like watching him on the court, watching him and Josh hit, him and Barney hit, he just gets to everything. Yeah. No, he does. It's just those, uh, like tiny laps of focus where he just misses those easy balls. Um, he's got a nickname in Philadelphia, PD Top Tape ah, Dickinson. Yep. I think his name's on RTO like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that tracks. And he, uh, just that tiny margin for error he goes for as well. It's just a bit too much. Just a little bit. So Tim, what's your tournament coming up? The next tournament coming up. Do you have any? So, you know, just pretty much just club champs here. Yeah. Um, second and third class. And it's going well, still in both. Uh, yeah, still in both. Oh, you that's know, great. Just grinding away. Yeah, it's well. nice, uh, <laughs> nice excuse to, to get out of the house in the middle of the day, play yeah, some yeah, tennis, yeah. you know. Who doesn't love that? I know, right? Uh, well, I'm sure we'll 
seeing a few more tournaments that uh, you'll be in maybe maybe soon maybe one one day you'll be in this one yeah you know we'll, we'll see you know yeah. we'll, we'll see I know they've got the the coaches here are pretty good they, they, they get people to a very good stand we have one RNT member I think playing Ben Stein so oh, he's, he's, yeah. the receiver. Yeah, he's, he's great Second he's gallery. playing later today against Robbie Whitehouse there oh. listen, that should be interesting like from what i've seen of robbie like yep. play like even just like some of the hitting sessions and practice sessions here seems very controlled you know yeah. very regimented whereas he is. ben is ben, ben, is ben is just controlled chaos yeah there's, it's, there's, it's there's incredible. No, no other way to put it i've never seen someone work so hard for a like individual well played, well played. Well played. but yeah i completely agree Versus ben is 40. he's wild but he knows what he's doing exactly um, and Robbie is very, he's, you watch him play, he's a very prissy player. Yes. Um, but I think it'll be a tough one for Robbie to get through that. I think with his age, he's just slightly slowed down a little bit. I, I will say that I was talking with him a little bit earlier. I think the fact that it is just an eight-game process, yeah. I think it's going to work to his advantage. Yeah. He can just empty the tank, you know, oh, and not nice worry shot. about having to, Into the yeah. receiver. you know, like draw it out over Four games to last. Yeah, I completely agree. Like when we, when me and Robbie ever practice, after 40 minutes, he's just done. Yeah. He can't go any <laughs> longer than that. So I think a nice eight-game process oh. really does suit him well. It's a nice shot by age. It's a great 15 shot. 15 up. Focusing back on the match, Pete has got to do a lot yes. to get back in here. AJ already halfway through the uh, the set. What do you think Pete's got to do differently? You know, I think it's a little bit. It's kind of like what you talked about. Like he goes, he goes for a lot, but his margin of error is, you know, it's like a very high risk, high reward. Yeah. You know, I feel like he needs to kind of just like pick his shots a little bit better. Again, who am I to? I'm not saying he's he's the pro, but uh, but yeah, it's very. Yeah. I think he knows yeah. like his back's against the wall right now, and so instead of kind of returning to, to type, so to speak, you know, yeah. playing the high percentage, he's going for it more, which yeah. is a bit of a double edged sword. It, it is tough because AJ, I think oh, his oh. sort of specialty is retrieving as well. So oh, yeah, I think if Pete's trying to play him against his own, like I think Pete has to sort of come back and sort of focus, try to get more. He's now playing AJ at his own game. Which then becomes tough in itself. Exactly. But I think the way for Pete to, to get back into the match just become more consistent. I, I couldn't agree more. Also, because I mean, age is just a brick wall. Yeah. You know, as you yeah. said, like retrieves everything, gets to everything. Yeah. Like he puts a lot of spin on it, but he's not really gonna he's not really gonna bomb it around the court. No, exactly. You know? he's not, he's not, he shouldn't be able to get it past. No. no. Has it chased the second gallery? Is that yes. Has a chase. I assume uh, Steve is in the winning gallery trying to coach Pete, Pete through this. Yeah, I think that's right. Hey. That's one of those low margin shots. <laughs> Five Cut games that in the corner. Not necessarily, not, not yeah. necessarily a force off that. Yeah. Yeah, we really won't be here for long. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> we I want to stay on. Well, actually, I think Robbie and... Robbie and Leon are coming into the booth next. Ooh, that, that, that should That's be a, good a treat. Yeah. I think Robbie Whitehouse, one of the best commentators, as well as Marcus in the game. He's a classic American pro there, too. <laughs> so I got to ask, what has it been like? You know, is you're primarily based out of, based out of Philly. Yeah. You know, obviously, I know you play a lot of rackets as well. But so like being able, you know, to be on court so regularly with like the likes of like Bobby and then like John. Yeah, as well. well, yeah, I play. With, I've probably played with John the most. Yeah, so it's, I'm very fortunate uh, to be able to do that. Like going to university, I'm sure many people know, it's, you don't actually do much there. Uh, well, I, I seem to not. I'm just at the rack club most days. <laughs> it's a summer camp. It's exactly. Um, I've got like many classes on Mondays and Wednesdays. So I, Smart man. I'm Smart there. man. Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but no, I'm very fortunate to have both John and Robbie. Robbie brings us obviously his wisdom, and John's just playing unbelievably right yeah. now. He's starting to really challenge Cam as seen in the US Open. Um, singles final went to five. That was an yeah. absolute incredible and crazy match, match to watch. Uh, so I, I'm very fortunate to have them. And like John as well is such a good training partner because um, he, he really like, he takes it so seriously and really intense during training so he sort of forces you to also match his intensity yeah. and train as hard as him 
and it's tough. I, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I, was, I, I, was gonna say, I, I can't do that most days. <laughs> so the men is a workhorse. Um, but he, he's incredible. Uh, and Philly are really lucky to have it. I'm really lucky to have it. And, uh, Out of court. Oh, come on, Pete. Really love up. This is a chance to, to get back in this match. 40. At yeah. least avoid the bagel. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John playing Cam this, uh, this week, I wonder. I think just in doubles. Just in doubles, yeah, it looks like that. Lost gallery. Oh. Yeah, look, John's only playing doubles this week, it seems like. Yeah. Well, it'll be good doubles practice for the uh, World Doubles in Chicago happening in three weeks. Should be an exciting one. That, um, that, that should be so much fun to watch. Yeah, it'll be uh, four teams uh, consisting of, well, I think, six American pros, essentially. Yeah. So it'd be, well, that's five. So there's Nikki and Rob, Ben and Bryn, Stephen, Cam, and Tim. Uh, St sorry, Stephen, John, and Tim and Cam. Yeah. Uh, and so there should be some great doubles there, especially after, again, the US Open doubles. Uh, yeah, extraordinary. It, it, I, it, I will say, if we can get another match like we did, you know, Stephen, John, be Tim and Cam, or that was great. final, the Open, yeah. again, insane. Yeah, no, it's, what's great is now it's two days. Like, we get two days of that, which is even better. Exactly. So it's not just one, one exactly. Yeah. So... It's, yeah, that was a crazy match, that one. He was twisting turns. Oh, oh, come on, Pete. Yep. Come on, 30, 40. Uh, just got to focus up. Get those unforced errors out. And you want to stay in the booth longer, Pete. Come on. Yeah, come on, Pete. <laughs> Let's go. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank everyone at the USCTA National Fund. Uh, the ah. RNT, USCTPF, and all individual sponsors. Uh, this event couldn't happen without you guys. So it's, a, it's really a privilege to be here. And uh, one of my favorite events to come to. Uh, the hospitality of New York and like, just being able to watch like, all the top pros in the country come here. Yeah. Yeah. Like incredible experience. Yes. Well, there we go. Pete's got his first game of the match. Here we go, Pete. No yeah, bagel. I know. Come no on. bagel. Bagel's off. I would imagine the Vegas line still has age taken this, but you know, uh, I think we'll, so. we'll, we'll see if Pete can make it interesting. Good guess. Great rally, great camera angle as well. I'm loving this angle. Oh! Yeah. Keep finding his form. There we go. Just took him a little bit. He's a slow starter. But like there, it's just consistency. Like no, nothing crazy. And then had a small opportunity to hit it a bit harder, go for that that grill in that corner, and worked out well. Yeah, worked it, worked it to his strength, and worked it to the shot he was looking for. Second gallery. AJ doesn't want Pete to get into a rhythm here. Yeah. <laughs> Shots, but Pete starting to be a bit more consistent there, and you can see it in those rallies. Yeah, it's, it's a little, little by little putting the pieces together. Yeah. It might just be a hair too late, but you know, we'll see. You know, stranger things have happened. I know. <laughs> I think I lost you. I could have been like five one down against AJ, and fortunately came back. So maybe Pete can. Hey, it, it's, it's been done before. I know. Yeah. Still, yeah. But these eight games sets are tough because you tap one small case, slow start and you're, you're done. Like you're, you're down five love. And I mean, especially with you know like skill levels and everything between you know, all the pros for the yeah. most part being so That's close. Like, yeah, no, that one little slip could lead to three, four. In this case, what was a five-game swing? Yeah. Like Pete, it's just finding his form, getting those good lengths. Another good shot. There we, go. there we go. There we go. love. Forty love. Could he do it again? Ball. Ooh, yeah. 
Oh, there great we shot, Pete. Sure Pete. Finding Eight. his form. Two, change to five. Yeah. I want Pete to get a chase here. Get back on that service end. You know, it, 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 yeah, again, even if anything to disrupt age a little bit, but you know, what is it? Statistics say like you know, 80% yeah. of the points are won from the service end. Something crazy like that. Yeah, this is an opportunity. He's going for it. Like, it's a ton, it's a good shot. Like, yeah, so he's, he's, again, hitting the right shot. It's the high, like the high percentage shot. Yeah. Not going no. for it too much, which is nothing too crazy. Okay, another opportunity to get for a counter here. All right, we're lucky. It's a good pick up from AJ there. Roll it a bit. A little bit. 15. A little handsy from the kid, but you know, it's all right. Yeah, he'll, he'll take it. He'll take it. Let's get out of this rut, this two game rut he's in. Great athleticism there from AJ. Wonderful stuff. Okay, here we go. There it is. Hello to everyone watching uh, on the live stream. We hope you're enjoying it. Uh, New York are doing a great job in putting it on. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions about the format, the tournament, or just court tennis in general, we'd love to hear from you. So comment away, please. What's great about this tournament as well is that uh, everyone's got to commentate. So you, you're going to get to hear from some of the top players in the world as, uh, as well. Like, unlike us, I guess we're probably not classified uh, uh, in that. Uh, well, yeah. But uh, Cam, Barney, uh, John, they'll all be in the booth at some point this week. And so it'll be, be great to hear from them and their opinions about, about uh, what's going on in the well, matches. I would say, I've, as a, a watcher of all of these you know, streams and events, I always find it interesting when yeah. you know, those guys get in the booth and it's almost like uh, it's like the pros doing like their own analytics yeah. like while they're watching. It's like, oh, it's like, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Oh, I never, it's, yeah, it's, it's almost a free lesson. You <laughs> exactly, know, if right? you want to tune in, it's, uh, it's free and uh, you're getting tips from the top pros. So exactly. it's, it's like right right having now. Federer and Nadal like commentating you know. a tennis match. You get some top, top tips. So uh, guys should definitely tune in uh, this entire week to, to hear some top analytics from the some fall. of the best players in the game. <laughs> yeah. AJ, finish us out now. I think Pete's been stuck on that receiving end for a bit too long. Well, I mean, to be fair, he's hitting the shots like to try and get a chase, and, and I just yeah. think AJ's doing a good job of at a minimum getting there. Yeah. He's hitting it well, but at this level, you can't, like, it's the shots you want to hit, but at this level, you've got to hit those shots. Exactly. Like that's, that game that Pete won at 5-1, uh, AJ hit two gallery chases. Got, Pete got on the receiving end, got the game, but since going back on the receiving end, he's just lost focus. Exactly. AJ's come back into, into form. It's kind of like what you said before, you know, AJ getting back over here, break his, yeah. break his rhythm, <laughs> focus probably a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So Jeff, Josh <laughs> coming to the coach, Pete. So yeah. Now all we need is a really good lip reader. I know. <laughs> so we had the, oh yeah, there is timeouts in this format. Uh, each team receive one timeout per match and you have one minute. I don't know if they come off course. It's a 
So it's, um, you know, you get one time out and the team gets to discuss what the, the new game plan is, essentially. So if they want to keep it or if they want to change it. Yeah, I think I saw Cam call the timeout during the during the Barney and Josh match. You know, he, he probably had his, his two oh, cents to that. It's a very smart shot from, from Pete there. 30-40. I will say that is also like one of the things I like about this event, the fact that you know, like coaching is allowed from the side galleries, that yeah. it's almost encouraged. You know, it really, like yeah. I, again, in regards to like the events and stuff that I watch, like the whole like team concept of it in a sport that game. predominantly is, you know, individual one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's games such a cool concept. Yeah. Well, I'm, like, I'm very fortunate as a player. I've obviously been one of the weaker players. It's great to have insights from the likes of, well, I'll, I'll have Nicky and Leon uh, be it, right, and Robbie uh, being, being able to coach me, which is, well, very lucky for me and I'm sure some of the other players are, as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm just very fortunate to have these guys uh, behind them. Oh, and that's one of the ones you didn't want to miss. New York showing off the extensive camera angles they have. Uh, Time out called by <laughs> team uh, member It's incredible Josh the setup they've got. I think no other club has, has a setup quite One like minute. it. They've got their even own commentary booth, which is what's incredible. Like this, this room is dedicated for commentary. I love it. It's my first time in this room. Yeah, uh, I didn't even know it existed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Barney's sitting beside us. He said production more than commentary. I uh, know. We think it's for commentary. This is our, our booth. <laughs> yeah, this is our booth now. Once, once on the mic, you, you claim the room. <laughs> Pete's got to do a lot. 7-2 down, Thirsty Love down. I think that was the first time out of the match, it seemed like. So I think so. Or if anything, you know, just a little, little water break at the changeover, yeah. you know, collect your thoughts. Why don't they change sides? And so I think that was a timeout. Oh. Yes, it was. Yeah, there, there it is. That's a good shot, Pete. Well, he gave himself a bit more margin 15, for that one. 30. And uh, AJ couldn't do much with that. Oh! He's finding his form. He liked it. We like that one. There we go. He's getting a little fired up. I know. Nothing yeah. crazy, like wasn't going for too much. 40, just peppering that, that backhand of Adrian's and uh, came away with the point. He's come back in this game. It's That's a great shot from AJ. Yeah, really shot. Shot. Completely wrong for the Pete there. And uh, it's a juice 40 all, so one juice. And then no one wins it and will go to one point to decide the game. Chase. Great Stroke. shot. Yeah. Thank you. Stroke. Oh. Match point number one. Advantage receiver. That was a great shot. And the match. Well, it was a pleasure. Conversation. We well, hope you enjoyed mine, your first time in the booth. Um, we'd hope to see you back Definitely. very soon. Are you, are you planning to do any more matches this week, or is this the... Uh, um, as of right now, there's no one I'm slotted on paper for, but hey, you know, uh, well, I, I may or may, not have, have, back, I may or may not have just caught the bugs. So I you know, know. It's, a, it's, it's an easy bug to catch. So. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you for everyone watching. Uh, stay stay tuned. We have Camden Rivier and Noah Moat versus Steve Vergona and Tony Holland. So this next match uh, should be a cracker uh, with Cam and Steve going sort of neck and neck with a no one, Tony, probably on the sidelines a little bit, but you never know. They could come it, out there, come it, out there. It, it, it may just turn into a battle of yeah. lefties, you know. Uh, but it should be an incredible match. And then uh, that will be the final match of Tambo versus Grill. And after that, uh, we begin the winning gallery versus the dead on. There we go. Uh, so it should be an exciting lineup for the rest of the day. So everyone, stay tuned and uh, keep on watching the live stream. Uh, but it was a pleasure uh, to commentate. 
And thank you, Tim. Yeah, man. Again, and, pleasure uh, is all mine. To, to come back soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Leon, I think we're live. Uh, welcome to the National League uh, big event that Barney Tamfield has put on here in New York. I'm here with Leon Smart out of Boston, uh, my teammate, by the way. And uh, Leon, how are you doing? 
doing great. Happy to be here. Happy to play here again. I know. Second year uh, that this is up here, that they're running it all one under one roof. It's a pretty good format. You like it? Yeah, it's a great format, and it's uh, roll on, roll off as well. So having that second court helps. That's like we can warm up and then go straight on and play. Like these guys have just been here for a couple minutes and they're straight in. Now they're ready to go. So for yeah, I guess for those that don't know, these guys have been hitting for 15 minutes on the other court, um, so they don't need a huge warm up. And we got a big one right now because I think batches are one all. We got Vergona and help me out. I can't see well. Vergona um, and Hollins. Oh wow! And then Noah and Camden. A lot of heat. Yeah. Stay awake down there. <laughs> um, I think it's a full two out of three, right? We might be here a bit, Leon. The two out of three. Doubles. Leg of the Tambor versus and Grill. Three will win the third. 2024 the National League match. Is to serve Who Kendrick do you like Rivier, in this match? Uh, I think it's always tough to go against Camden. To receive Steve Vergona and Tony Hollins. If they don't serve well to Miller, I think he can attack them. Matches to be the best of three sets. Three looks all like in the third if we get there. Like and we're playing one deuce followed by 40 all. Play well, gents. Except five all. Wow, we got James Stout to mark a match. <laughs> That's impressive. I haven't seen him mark a match in 10 years. Can you shut it down? <laughs> Stop right now. Pretty good. 15 love. There you go. There's your high serve, yeah, Leon. You serve well. I love the high serve here. Super grippy penthouse. Got so much room up there. Mm -hmm. Wow. Pick up D. 30 love. Good volley by Noah. I think a lot of this will come down to serving. If Camden can tie up uh, Steve on his serve, so Steve can't be aggressive when he turns. And then um, if Tony can serve well enough to Noah to stop Noah smashing the first ball. It's going to be a big factor. And Noah will probably play this role pretty good, just not doing too much. And when the time's there, he'll let a couple missiles go. It'll yeah. be tough. You on the receiving end of some of those uh, missiles once in tuxedo, right? Oh Against Noah. With those rocket balls that Chisholm puts out there. King, <laughs> one game to love. Remember you not being too happy. Huh? I remember you did. You weren't too happy out no. there. No. Cam's gonna be hard to beat in that corner. And for going to grabbing a gallery. No strokes. So who do you uh, who do you play today? I got Ben Stein tonight. Ben Stein, oh that's right, yep. Be fun. The energizer bunny. I haven't seen Ben play Jay's too much. Gallery. I've seen him play doubles, but seen no He's pretty athletic out there. Yep. Let's see if, I hope I can get the balls into the corners. It's tough. That's, yeah, they're so fast. Like you just have to knock it in. It's, it's coming down. First chase is the door. Hazard Cow, right? Oh, God. Watch it, Tony. Oh, oh thank you, Noah. Fifteen love. Second chase is second gallery. That's too good. I don't know if I would serve railroads to Noah, to be honest. I think, yeah, Tony's Going just figured high. that out. 
Kuzminska. Oh, I like that. Getting the least post that mid court post, and you're in the rally. Not Stevie. 30-15. You got a lot coming up. You got the world doubles, right? You and Bryn. Yeah, no, I'm not in. You're not? No. Not in that one, unfortunately. Chase. Ben Matthews. Ben Benton. Tower Matthews, that's right. Yeah, and Brent. I think Josh Dodge and I are first reserve. You got a big match tonight, though. You got the, the New York boys this week. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play Stout tonight, and then Barney. 40, 15, and then one the chase. doubles, we're playing Vagona Dodgson. It's a good lineup card for you. Yeah. You could good. walk out of here. That could be three. It looks like three easy wins for you. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Playing three New York pros I on know. the home court. I know. Yeah. I've always struggled here on this court. I think it's just so different to Boston. Uh, it is a tough court, but you've gotten some court time. I think you're ready now. Uh, I hope so. Chase <laughs> one and two. Shot, Tony. Game, one game all. You think most players this tournament are going to end up serving high? I, th I think so. I mean, anything not to stop Vergona from turning. That bobble does work. I was surprised if he was able to turn on that, but no one should be able to handle that. I think we'll, he'll be ready for that if he does it again. Surprise it, Cam's look like allowing him to boast that. I would have thought he'd just give Steve a cut volley so that that ball can't be boasted over to Noah, and then he would start that rally. The first ball. <laughs> Noah just got out of the way in time now. Uh, Noah's first time playing. <coughs> National. Uh, it is. Good to Chase. see him out there. Last gallery. Yeah. 30, 15, him, Freddie, Ben Stein. Uh, anyone else? Um, Pete Dickinson. I'm not sure that he played last yeah, that's year. That's right, first time. Uh, Stein played last year. Yeah, he was a doubles player last year, I yeah. think. Harris. <laughs> Noah's improving. He's down to six. Oh, his best handicap was a 6.1. Who's that? Noah. I think it's been like last month or so that he, he had that number. So he's he's starting to figure it out. Oh, good guy. Chase last gallery. You think uh, Steve and Cam here are trying to figure each other out before the world doubles if they potentially play each other? Uh, I think Steve is ready to go, man. Look at him. He's lost a few pounds. He's been back on the treadmill. Of course. Uh, 40, a great world double. Yeah. That match in Boston was the best doubles match I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a, that was a great one. Not a great one to mark. Fortunately for me. We had a long one in <laughs> Philly. They, they did another four and a half hour one. Is it as long as that? It was crazy, yeah. But it wasn't in Boston. It was like so tight one. the whole entire match. Yeah. There were some lopsided sets in Philly. But it was still amazing tennis. One ball. That bubble, you're talking bubble. about. Bubble, it, it works here. You can get it in. 
15 love. Especially if they don't volley that thing. Oh, wow. 30 love. One fold. How about you, Leon? Are you now like shut, shutting it down? Will you give yourself a little break after this event? Uh, no, I mean, we got the pro singles at the end of May. So it's not that Jeez. long, maybe a, a few Yard weeks, a couple gallery. weeks. Getting right back out there and then again. Hopefully. Good. Yeah. Hopefully. One fold. It's not really much of a break anymore, to be honest, with the Champions Trophy being in the summer now. That's the one in July, right? I think it's in August. Uh, yeah, like end of July, early August. And then they got the one in, they got the National Open at the New Court this year in July. Yep. So, Hazard, second gallery. Like early, sorry, late May, early June, pro singles. Then July, you have National Little Open. Casual, guys. Then August, you have Champions Trophy. Then September, you got French Open. So it's st really straight Just through. Just keep going. God, Leon. <laughs> oh. Thirty love receiver lead. Chase a yard worse than last gallery. Uh oh. Out of court. Fifteen thirty hazard second gallery. We're gone. It's a uh, red and those. butter. Lost it. The goal was second gallery. That was first. Well marked by Stouty there. 40 15. Volley there, stepping into it. Two hander as well. 30, like the two hander at the net. I don't. I haven't figured that out. Lum, Lumley has it. He loves it. Yeah. You do it too. You got that two hander. Only if it's really slow and I can time it, or if it's really quick and I have no time to react. Do the times Jeez. you pull it out. Yeah. You do a little topspin when I. When I can't. I can't hit like John. John hits it like kind of like a baseball swing, completely flat. I have to topspin it. Okay. I mean, I've, I've tried, I just can't do it. Huh? I just can't flatten Advantage it off yeah. and time server. it. So that cut volley there, that slow spinny one's pretty Works. tough on this court. Yes. Game. Two games all. All right, the boy, they're starting to just get into it. I think we're going to see some rallies now. Well done, Noah. Second gallery. No strokes. There's that high one. 15 love. It must be reasonably tight for uh, Steve to not be able to turn on it as well. I'll let it go past him. Oh boy. Fifteen all. One fault. 
Since we're still at the uh, the start of the match, who are you taking here, Robbie? I, I'm with you. I, I I think it's hard to bet against the world champ. Sorry, no, you're right there. But just 30, to make 50. it fun, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Vergona. You gonna take Vergona? I'll okay. take Vergona. Especially if he does more of that. Yeah. 40, 15, um, but I still think Moe's can find, you can get some errors out of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's Boston, Leon? First full year up there for you? Uh, no, this is like the end of the second season now. Second season for you. Yeah, so we have the, the U.S. 40, 15, amateur at the end of the month. Oh, good one. Chase, yep. second so gallery. Let's go, of, uh, Let's go Team Grill. A lot of good players playing in that. We've got 16 guys, and I think I think everyone's under like a 20 handicap, somewhere around there. Maybe 25. Oh. Oh, oh, behind the back, little topspin roller. Yeah, we're off the great <laughs> shot, Tony. Again. Might do that. Three games you should do a two. Tuesday clinic on that. <laughs> Preston Tony playing back. I guess that first was pretty quick. You don't like the guy back on the just on the return of serve, maybe? If it boasted. Uh, no, I mean I like. Well, I mean, it's my preference would be to stay up and trust that my volley is good enough. Okay. Um. Well, we'll see what he does here. So he's moving back. I mean, I don't think you can force a deep bubble, right? No. Unless, Unless it's really, really back really bad, and then he's still guarding that Miss Main Wall dead on, too. That, if he's back, he can do a lot with that ball. Instead of Vergona. Vergona pro probably won't let it go, though. Vergona doesn't know it now. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Hi, Tony. Where's Moats? That's what Vergona's thinking, that whole point. 30-15. He's going to start taking anything that comes off the penthouse. And that left Tony. side, yeah. He's, he's smiling. He's better than his That's so good. That's uh -oh. really good. That's more of that. Oh, a, that serves working. Keep it. 40-15. All right. Is that three two or four? Four games to two. Four two. Four set. Ah, uh, that's a good shot. Keep it there, Meg. Keep rolling. Fifteen, love. Tough on the leave. 15 love. It's not much, I guess, he could do with it no. from there, right? All he could do is lift it. No, but it hurts when you leave it. You know what I mean? You're thinking you're going to. You should win that point. Yes. Possibly. Likes that serve. He's really the only guy that serves that. PK, that hard that demi, full, full demi. Yeah. yeah. He was serving it in Philly for the U.S. Open. Covered. 
High side cut, wall of works. Kent was just serving it pretty well. 40 15, one chase. We think uh, Cam and Noah have to think about changing here. That's good. 5 2 down. I like Cam to keep it down off the penthouse, which, he'll be, which he will right now. <laughs> yeah, I guess whenever I mean, he might be pressing, you don't know. Like Noah makes a few errors like that at last game, and then he starts to think he's got to end the rally on every every shot he's 40, hitting. 15 receivers lead. Chase the line. Trust he's not gonna sell a railroad here. Oh. 30, 40. Shot there by Mr. Moats. have an advantage or disadvantage playing court tennis like we watched just Steve hit that ball off the uh, that forehand off the table it got so deep behind him and he's a right hander I don't think would have the power to do the anything edge? with it I, I mean he I what he edge. does in the doubles he definitely makes it an advantage yeah he moves I'm around ball. that court and tries to find more forehands and he's able to do it chase first gallery it's really like he can turn on pretty much anything off the back wall. Unless it's a really tight railroad. So he can still return with his forehand. Correct. And he's so deadly in this left side on the service end. It's a big rally here. Not the Camden we all know, yeah. But <coughs> he's just warming up. Um, I wouldn't count him out yet. Not even five one down in the second. Out of court. Thirty love. If Noah starts doing that. That's where they could be a problem. The winner from Vergona. 15 
control. Oh, wow. Tony, good spot. Full play. Juice! Go on, one tip. One ball. Chase, better than second gallery, Juice. Good shot. I like the drive. Especially, these balls are quick. It's, it's not going to ever hurt you. It's pretty tough to volley down by your knee. If you do, you're hitting up on it. Uh, too good. Just good shot. Like Advantage receiver well. one chase. Good crowd down there. Probably 50 people watching. Yeah, it's busy. Busy back, back there. It's normally a good turnout. I remember last year there were a bunch of people. Yeah. They were still filtering in, so. I think New York likes this uh, event. They do a great job with it. It's awesome. Advantage receiver chase better than second gallery. Tim, who's Tim from Rhode Island? Tony. Game in the first. Big Tony set. supporter. Newport chiming in. Holland and and, and Vergona with the Check first set. set. That is a shocker. Level. Yeah, I will be shocked if Camden doesn't play better in this uh, set. Shot. Shot. 15 left. Oh. Embarrassing. Oh. Oh. 30 left. <laughs> Shot by Vergona, though. 15 Oh, there's some pace. Yeah, you don't see Camden 40, hit that 15. shot nearly as much as Steve. But he can. Yeah, he can. I wonder why he chooses not to. <laughs> I think he's not really now. I, I think we're going to see this set where we see the world champion, Camden. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's tough. they got to stop them both in that first ball every 30, time. 40. Get that ball over, Noah. He's gonna do it again. Yeah. It's a little 
negative. He's like hiding against that wall a bit. I'd probably like to see him give himself some space so he can step into something. He's like tucks. I think even if it went on his backhand and he took his racket back, he's hitting the wall. That's how close he is. He's missed a couple. His confidence is probably down. Now he's trying to hide a little bit, but he, this is where Cam's got to pick him up a little. 40 30 receiver lead. Hazard worse than second gallery. Right, Noah. Good game here. Simplify it. He probably hasn't had much experience playing at this level either, right? Correct. Like, you know, playing with Cam against Steve Vagona. It's, it's a, different, a little different, different yeah. pace. Everything's a little bit tighter. I guess, you know, I'd be nervous as well. Yeah, so. I think that's what it is, though. It's still more like going to see Dan Lakaitis a little more and he's fine in a match like this. Or just do a few more. Sir, good power though. I was just going to say, I can't do 15, that. 40. I got to have it make a different ball with like a super ball in the middle. Thirty forty. <laughs> Great serve. Smart, Steve. And high serve is working. Yep. I'll be using that in my match today. Oh, are you going with it? We'll see how it goes, but probably. I mean, I'm a fan of that serve Unbelt. anyway. Who do you have tonight? Stout. And if it's loose, you can probably turn Your on it. Your pretty good, though, mate. That would be probably my backup. Smart, dude. Great shot. And I know he's not listening to this because he's marking. Advantage so server. Oh, my God, that's right. He might play the tape back, though. He's <laughs> knowing Stouty. There you go, Noah. I'm cheering for Noah now. Oh, one point. Stay aggressive. Boom! Oh, it's close. So the other players on the Tamba team are AJ and Barney. I think they're down there watching, giving support. I'm sure they are, man. They're Kent played pretty well in that singles match just before this. You are allowed to take a minute timeout for uh, last gallery. For coaching, I guess. Barney will, if they see Noah go off the deep end again, which looks like he's back though. They might do a minute timeout soon. Just to try and reset him. But, if he stays where he is, I, the other guy's going to have to figure it out. Noah just has to keep a few balls over, move his feet a little bit, and let the world champ take over. Last gallery.
Two games to love. Second set. A zipper. I got in quick. 1530. <laughs> he hit down on that one. Jesus. Yeah, a lot more errors now from uh, 40, yeah, Tony. A little high side wall uh, spinner is a pretty good serve. Hello, hello, hello. You should have used it after losing that last game. That's actually what I said. Yeah. I, I would disagree. I think they lose this game. Well, no, if they lose this game, then the set's done, right? So there's no point. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, three to set's done. Third set. 40-15. Yeah. Receivers lead. Hazard, second gallery. Yeah. Oh. 40. Let's go, boys. This game. Fire up. This game. So good. So good. Come on, this game. That's Hamburg goes deep when you hit main wall. Deuce. Yeah, I think Steve also puts a little inside spill on it. It makes it go, like, check a little deeper as yeah. well. One fault. Slow spinny one, like you were saying, server, does work. It's down. tough, I mean, sometimes it feels like it shoots, sometimes it bites, and then yeah. if it does get into yeah. that back, uh, into the corner, <laughs> and it hits the back wall, that slow one seems to drop. Drop in there. If you hit it in there quick, it, it comes out an extra yard, a yard and a half. You have a bit more time with it. I say that, and you'll probably see me later today. Just lacing on it. Trying to lace it in there at 100 miles an hour. And you can replay this and, uh, and <laughs> show me. Out of court. Big point. I looked like it was going to be three love and a blink of an eye. And Fault. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. Good <laughs> Must be nice to be here. Campbell <laughs> Wall Grill. 
Three games for Love. Down in his set. ankles. Great volley. It's hard when the uh, left-handers get up there as well. It's that T position. You've got to either find the side wall or straight at them. It's that high forehand volley you can hit down it. It's tough to defend. A winning gallery. Yeah. Love. Where's Barney? I think a timeout is coming soon. Just slow down the game a little bit. So what would you do now? You got to get Noah. You got to find Moats if you're for going to, in Hollands. 40 love. Yeah. Well, he's looking more comfortable up there as well, I think. Like a lot of bossing like that over to Noah. I don't think anyone's trying to go straight through him. Not yet. Oh, oh. God, he got his stick on it. Game, four games to love. See, like that Chisholm force down the line on the return. That would be one that would be a lot harder to deal with than boast. Jay, yeah, gallery. absolutely, and see if he's seen that one. I, I mean, guess he is, he's playing better. He's definitely playing better, but I guess neither Steve or Tony can hit that ball hard down the line, though, so they just don't Chase. have that option. Yeah, yeah. Two yards. Steve's hitting it on the backhand. Tony can get it, but it's not coming in at, like, the heat that Two Tim chases, hits it. Right. no strokes. I mean, and by that point, like, the momentum is going to be too late to then use the channel. It's not never been going to be able to explain. I think Oh, well played. Great rally. That's well played. That's well played. 15 love, Chase, two yards. Two. What does Cam hit here? Oh! Oh, I think that's pretty close. He well, was close. <laughs> Great eye. 15 all. You say the targets here are pretty open compared to, oh, sorry, pretty big compared to other courts. Jay's Definitely compared to six. Washington. And Chicago. Yeah. I feel like they're quite big. Even like just looking I at the they're... galleries there. I feel like that penthouse might just be a little bit higher than other courts. I like the small windows down in D.C. though, watching that world championship. I, it was... I think it makes for a better game, more rallies. Yes. One ball. Stay confident. Let's go. 30 all. One chase pending. We're going to think that's down? I don't know. 
Hard to see from here. Two misses. Great job, though, by Moats. Deuce. What do you think the big difference has been between these two sets? I think Cam serving that much better. Uh, and I was just going to say, he hasn't made many mistakes. And Noah just put one in the net. But he's played better this, sec this yep. set. Settled in a little bit. Well, Cam's got away from the high serve as well, right? He's hitting Going that. with that high, chippy one, which factor. It's not a super hard serve to, to pull off either. You know, it's a pretty basic serve. He's just getting the response he wants. Oh, oh, 40 all, one point. That's, you know, it's a serve. Yeah. A lot, of our, um, a lot of our members can serve that. That's uh, no, it's not Absolutely. like there's a ton of spin. You're not kidding. It's kick back. Um, <laughs> I mean, it works well in this court. Philly would sit up a little bit off the back, but that's a good serve here. Oh, it looks like we might the third set. You just throw this We're game and the Hollands have got a. Either pair, whoever's at the receiving end, let's say they lose the set. They're going to change server. Do you think they're going to change? So I was just thinking. I mean, you probably would if you're going to be. Well, maybe not. Steve might still want to serve to Cam. Tony's not a bad server, though. I think I would switch. Obviously, Cam and, then, and Noah and will see what no, yeah, and see what we're going to do with Noah. Fifteen up. Oh, boys. Definitely can't do that, Leon. 30-15. He cannot. No. Surprised he didn't hit that one pretty hard. I thought he was going to lace it. That ball there, that That's the one, one down the line. Yeah. Uh, it's good against right. anybody. Radio, one chase pending. Yeah. Oh, too good. 40 30, Chase, second gallery. Good grill. Well, I don't think these guys are going to switch servers. No, they'll keep it the same. Yes. It just doesn't work. I think it works. Yeah. Leon, someone's giving me a compliment. Actual yeah, magic is saying great Chase, commentary by, by Leon. So, good job. Oh, thanks. Good job to you, too. Well, 
They only said you, but that's all right. Double falls. They Drake gave up the set. In the house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. All right, now I think it starts at three all. Three all, yeah. I was just okay. looking. What's the match score? And final set. We will so be it's one match all. This is it. It comes down to the last three games here. Yeah. He gets the three first. I think for the uh, for the standings as a team, whoever wins this will get three points for their team. Got it. At you from no emotes. You like that shot. I've been just watching it hit. I mean, that little lob from the backhand side into the grill. It doubles, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, it's a good shot. But yeah. you hit it well. As long as like it's, I want the back player to get behind him so I get both of them. Oh, no. Oh, oh lordy. Well, that angle always works. <laughs> 30-15. Yeah, that lob's great for opening up the left side of the court. You get both players 30, on the right 15, side, because no the guy on the tee is probably going to leave it and their partner covers I, it. I agree, man. It's hard in doubles when you've got two, two pros or single figures. We could get most balls back, or at least touch it. Ooh. Hands. you going to let one go here. Yeah. We'll play, Tony. We'll play, Tony. Fire up. Come on. 40-15. Take it personally. This guy, do you want me to warn you? <laughs> Don't do it. Take it personally. This guy. Good serve. That's too good. Good play. Good play. Oh. Chase, one and two. Wow, one and two. <laughs> we were just, Lankitis was just talking about this. How do you feel returning Cam serve beating one and two. Confident? Not great, no. 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 Especially, Especially the one he's been serving. That little high spinny one. <laughs> yeah. Fragone's gonna have to find something here. 40 30 serve. But maybe that Lakitis meeting one and two. helped him. Let's see. Oh, we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. Lost it, worse than two. Yeah. Game four games to three, final set. Good grill, come on. I think that's seven straight games. Yes, it is. No. Oh, boys. 15 left. I think he's trying to find the galleries too hard there. So he went I think it. he's just looking for anyone other than Camden on the court. Comes for going. Well left, Noah. Ah, uh, he's playing wow. well. Uh, is it a hazard? Come on, guys. It's close. Stroke. Thirty love. Let's go, Tony. Go, Tony. 1530. One fold. That's a good gap. 
Bouncing with the gallery. It's got a bit on a... Quick bogger. Timeout is coming, guys. Dobson's on his way out. I don't know what he's going to say. One minute. Uh, I'm starting it right now. Thank you. Oh <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tactical timeout there. Completely he's slowed got the game it. down. He's probably not even saying anything to them. He just wants to I don't think he's going to say, yeah. <laughs> Imagine him telling still Steve that he's not playing well and telling Steve <laughs> yeah, what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a good doubles up next as well, straight after this, which is our team. Nick Howe and uh, Freddie Bristow are taking on John Lumley and Connor Medlock. That would be a good match. And I don't think anyone's seen Connor play in uh, a few years. So. A couple years. He's playing with a smaller racket. Uh, top, top it's uh, not a uh, sanctioned U.S. I guess he can play. Uh, I saw him the other day playing with it. It's like a junior racket that he's cut down. Yep. Five games to three, final set. Connor's a talented guy. Oh, uh, Noah's now like, whatever happened in that first set, good job by Noah of getting it out because he's playing well now. Oh. The Moat Show. Again. Oh, oh my God. When will they learn? 40 love. John, who I think sets everything up. He's up here hitting all the control and he set up the camera. Okay, so great job, John. Guys, I'm out of here. Thank you.
Testing, testing. Testing. So testing. Let's, let's take this off. Testing, testing. We can't hear ourselves. Oh, we can't? Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the second match here in the 2024 National League. We've got a treat here in front of us. Uh, the the uh, scoreboard has not been updated, but we have uh, John Lumley and Connor Medlow, Nikki Howe and Freddie Bristow. Uh, you'd say uh, Freddie Bristow being uh, one of the younger, uh, rapidly emerging players in the game. Um, Connor Medlow uh, mostly playing rackets these days, but uh, a terrific left-handed player, left-handed railroad. John Lumley needs no introduction. World number two, challenge for the world championship this year. Uh, he beat his opposition here, Nikki Howe, in the final eliminator. Nikki uh, just graduating to world number three here. Um, so we've got an unbelievable match. Joining me for commentary here, Mr. Mars Clothier. Uh, Great to have you, Mr. Clothier. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Barney. Thanks for having me. Um, now, I think uh, you and I spoke a little bit about this, but uh, you've obviously played this game for, we won't date you. We, we won't, maybe you'll do that to yourself, but you certainly played in the generation where uh, Nick's father, John's father were uh, top-notch players. Obviously, you know, you know Freddie's father quite well. Yep. Um, uh, it, it's great to see uh, the sort of torch being passed down generation to generation uh, as it was for you and I. Definitely, no question about it. Um, and yeah, uh, their, their fathers were all very good players. Um, um, played with and against, I think all of them at one point or another. Um, in fact, uh, I, I played uh, John's father, uh, Colin, uh, in, the, I'm a, in the late 80s, uh, it was the first or second round of the U.S. Open at the time. I think it may have been my first U.S. Open, and I had high expectations for what was going to happen in that match, and, uh, and, and John's father took it to me. Um, he's a very, very good player, and, um, um, and Nicky's father, Jonathan, as well, was a, was a was a very good player. You know, the uh, they played in an era, um, in, in some ways, unfortunately for them, where they had to contend with Wayne Davies, Chris Ronaldson, Graham Highland, Barry Totes, Lockie Ducar. And so you had that, that core group that was perennial semifinalists around the the Grand Slam events, and so it was it was a little difficult uh, for them to break break through that tier. And then, of course, Julian Snow uh, came along, and and Rob shortly after that. So the, the, the these draws were really really tough, sort of uh, when their fathers were in their prime in in the 80s, and then going into the, sort of the early 90s. But yes, but uh, nice to see uh, nice to see their sons playing and playing at such a high level. You know, as I, as I look through um, at the American players who are involved in the event, uh, myself, uh, Noah Motes, Camden Revere, uh, Rob Whitehouse being the exception, but Freddie Bristow, all of these players also played on the Clothier Cup in their youth, which you should have tremendous pride in. Yes, so uh, that was named after my father, and uh, my father would be very proud of what um, the Clothier Cup teams have done and, and, and most recently what the Clothier Cup team did uh, down in Washington, D.C. this summer. I, I was there one day and that, that team was exceptional. Uh, in fact, I would say that team was probably the best in the history of the Clothier Van Allen Cups. That team was really good. We can argue about that one later, Mr. Clothier. But, uh, yeah, I know there was, a, there, was a, there was a team that you were on that with Camden that would have been very strong as well, but I don't know if it quite had the depth of this team, but anyway. That's true. And then there was a team in, in, the, in the early 80s as well that was pretty strong.
Nice first point up until that point. Getting our bearings here. Was the high serve very popular um, when you were in your heyday out here? Seems to have gotten very popular amongst the very top players nowadays. You know, I think it's, I think it has gotten more popular in this era. Uh, in in yesteryear, the player that hit it most was was Lockie Ducard. He hit it particularly well at, at Queens, um, but it does seem like a more a more popular serve today. Uh, I feel like. Less railroads are hit today um, as well. And, uh, shot, That's Connor. a good shot. Yeah, I think, um, you know, generally the name of the game here at the top of uh, the top of the mountain is to stop people forcing as hard as they possibly can and accurately as they can, which is probably why a lot of these serves are sort of, you know, Either losing or gaining popularity. I just want to say hello to everyone on the stream. Please, uh, please write in. Uh, we want to see your comments. We want to see where you are in the world, uh, where you're representing. Um, say hello, please. See a few friendly, friendly oh, names nice. up there already. Great to see. That you were part of the uh, part of the governance here when the system got uh, put in place. It's great to see it put in use. Um, we've got tremendous pride in, in our in-house abilities here. We've got tremendous contribution from a gentleman that probably hasn't been named today, but I'll name him a few times, and that's Jonathan Teradista. He's worked tirelessly uh, so that we have great streaming. So thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan's done a great job not only with this, but all around the club for, for years. Um, and, and the ability to live stream uh, these matches like this is, uh, it's been a, it's been a nice step forward for the game. This game, service lead, one game to love. <laughs> nice comment from Peter Cipriano. Yes, Connor is meant to hit the ball over the net. Freddie a little shaky in the early going here. Freddie's got potentially one of the best backhand volleys I've ever seen, actually. Um, so let's let's look for that as this match progresses. It's pretty good on the forehand volley there, too. Has Freddie decided what he's going to do after college yet? I believe Freddie's going to take a gap year and uh, try and get as good as he can in these sports. I'm not sure of his status in rackets. I know that he's hoping for a world championship. I'm not sure whether he'll be granted one or not. Or that's, sorry. He's hoping for a world championship uh, challenge. But I, I'm not sure whether it's been granted to him or not at this stage. Nice roll from Connor there. Good get from Nikki. Out of court. 40-15. These guys will not have played a tremendous amount together. Um, so it's always kind of interesting learning learning about your partner on the go. But uh, the doubles in this format is worth twice as much as the singles. So these matches are critical. I think it's one of the nice things about what this National okay. League format does. It puts players together that wouldn't normally play together, unique pairings against uh, another set of unique pairings, and it, 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 it makes for matches that you don't generally see. So I think that's nice for our members. It's not, I think it's probably nice for the players as well. Yeah, absolutely. Gallery. 15 love receivers. It's been kind of uh, very pedestrian so far. No oh. one's no one's letting it rip too hard yet. I think we will see some of that for sure. Certainly, certainly Nikki in particular can absolutely.
smoked the ball. He's got tremendous pace. Great ball there from shot. John. Ready love. Well, it's sort of a different different Ready shot up. than we see traditionally. A little outside half law, meanwhile data. That's a little different style than your approach to the main wall. Force I'm more, line. yeah, I'm more, you know, straight to the point. Straight to the point for sure. See James Medlow in the stream, also critiquing his brother's abilities, which is nice to see. Peter Cipriano, again, confirming that Freddie was denied his world championship challenge, unfortunately, due to the procedures. But needless to say, he'll be playing a ton of rackets and, and tennis over the next year. Where will he, will he be sort of stationed or will, what will be his home court as he takes his next step? Well, I think we have tremendous uh, ambitions here that he'll come to New York for that year, but uh, he gets pulled in a lot of directions as do you know, a lot of the top players. Obviously, we hope that he would spend some time here. He's a great kid to have around in addition to his oh. abilities. Just like his dad. Fifteen love. Good cut volley, good gap. Shaky. Uh, Great gap from John there. What do you love? Tremendous crowd tonight. If we probably can't you hit it. express yeah, that too Thank well, you. but. Definitely got people all through the Pell Room, side galleries. Looking forward to three tremendous days here. Two games, Joe. Yeah, I think this format really lends itself to participation from the club's members to come watch. Uh -oh. Had great, great support, top to bottom. You obviously playing a huge part in this, um, but uh, from the board level to, to the games committee level to the membership patronage is unbelievable here. Can't say enough, can't say a big enough thank you to the USCTA. Um, as of more recent years, the, the uh, United States Court Tennis Preservation Foundation has been extremely generous in helping us cover some expenses. Um, that organization helps with the um, building of new courts, uh, it helps with the running of player development. Um, massively important organization here in our country. So thank you to Bill McLaughlin, Jay Lippincott, and all the folks there. Um, I know we're gonna see our USCTA president, Mary Livingston, in the coming hours or days. So um, thank you to everyone who's been involved with making this happen here. And, and Barney, you and the Pro Shop team have done a great job organizing this as well. And, uh, you know, and the, ga the Games Committee's leadership uh, in all of our sports has been, has been tremendous. And the collaboration between the Games Committee and you and James and the team has been, has been first class. Um, uh, this event is a testimonial to that. Well, thank you. We're lucky to be here with you guys. So, so um, any matches catch your uh, catch your fancy in the? Uh, do you know James and I are squaring off in doubles tomorrow? Where is this? 
Ah, uh, here. Hopefully you didn't make plans for the 6.20 tomorrow evening. Oh, wow, that is going to be some match. I will be here for that. Great. So do, would, you like, would you like to preview that match, Barney? Uh, so that's, um, that's uh, Camden Revere and myself, first time playing together in 20 years at least. We were talking about it last night. And John Lumley and James Stout. So uh, world number one and myself and world number two and James. So uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot on the line. A lot more than money on the line in that match. And there's another match that's catching my uh, my eye here, which is the Lumley Stein versus Game Vergona three, Dickinson doubles two, match, time, 520 on Thursday. Yeah, that'll be unbelievable. Ben is a tremendous doubles player. He is. I would say he's one of the top. Probably controversial to say, but certainly, a, to me, he's top five up players in the world. Connor bringing the heat off of that tambour there. Great to see. And what do you think about the the match between the the Hall of Famer uh, Rob Whitehouse versus Pete Dickinson four o'clock tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're always lucky to have the Hall of Famer Rob Whitehouse in the house. In fact, but uh, to have him play his former you know? Pete wasn't an assistant to him, but an apprentice. Uh, but I think uh, that could be a changing of the guard moment. It, it could be a huge moment in the sport, I would say. Wow, Mickey pumping a nice grill there. 30, 15. You know, just looking at the, at the matches, 40, nice, nice to see Noah Motz in this. Noah Motz, yeah, he's, he's uh, played a great, great game there. You just mentioned his forehand volley made a big difference to Team yeah. Tambor at the end of the previous match there. I really haven't seen him play too much, but um, uh, nice to see how much progress he and some of the other young, young U.S. players have made and how, how good they've gotten. Mm, 100%. Yeah, I think um, perhaps one of the reasons that we get so much support from the various organizations and, and members is uh, this used to be a strictly professional event, and uh, now we're starting to invite some of the top amateurs to join us. Um, and I think it's good for everyone. Uh, obviously, the USETA, the, the foundation, and um, various um, VIPs want to see the United States stepping up at the Bathurst level, and this is a great opportunity to integrate our top amateurs into uh, into playing that, that caliber of match, I think. Wow, fancy footwork from John there. Here we go. It would be a tremendous accomplishment for the U.S. to win the Bathurst Cup again. When did that has that happened? Did you win any bathers? No, no. Uh, actually, uh, Tim Chisholm and I played together in the early '90s, and we came close. Uh, but Julian Julian Snow basically stopped us single-handedly. Oh. <laughs> but. I, I, I actually don't know the last time the U.S. has won the bathers, but uh, I think with this this new this new group. Um, there's there's a good chance that that's possible. I agree. Best best chance in my playing lifetime, which is coming up on 30 First years, gallery. scarily. You guys, starting to get some better points here. It's a pretty exciting match here. Three all in the first set. Um, for those who don't know, we're going to play two out of three sets here. Um, and three all in the event of a third set. I think um, part of the magic that happens is uh, we're trying to condense the format as much as possible while still keeping the integrity of, of, of real matches. Uh, so we're, we're playing four singles tonight and two doubles. Um, 
And based upon last year, it worked pretty well. We're gonna, hopefully it stays more or less on time. So uh, viewers here and, wow. That's a different way of winning a chase. Viewers, uh, both spectators here and viewers on the stream can plan uh, hopefully on Swiss timing. That's a good gap. Probably, I think when Freddie gets going, he's going to make that every time. But there's a lot of pressure here. Connor's super steady. John is the epitome of of uh, consistent. You'd say there's more firepower on the receiving end right now. Uh, time, please. And more consistency. <laughs> Nice job by Connor so there. So embarrassing. <laughs> Get a picture of that. No. Someone, take a picture. Someone screenshot that one. Yeah. Let's do that every day. <laughs> I've certainly given some lessons where that's happened, but I've not seen it in competitive play, I don't think. It's a warning, Mr. Medler. <laughs> Uh, four games to three. Four three. Receivers. Fifteen long. While he doesn't play an awful lot, Connor still has tremendous abilities and he works the ball really well. Mm, not the best instance of it there, but. Pacino. Second day on this court yeah, for these see. players. Um, I think Steve may have come in a day early, but definitely uh, we'd say New York is significantly different than a lot of the courts here in the States. Plays a bit more severely, cuts down pretty heavily. We've got a small yeah, bando, a very true tambour for sure. I don't think many people would be surprised by that, but the angle of the penthouse definitely differentiates uh, the style of play and what serves work and don't. Um, we tend to have medium to smaller balls, all regulation of course, but probably makes for a quicker, more, uh, more aggressive style, which uh, I think by Tomorrow, the next day, will we'll really uh, shine on the, especially on the double side. We'll all be pinging around. What does the players get used to the court? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The timing of this must be good for for those that are playing in the in the upcoming world doubles. Three. Yeah, yeah. So two of these players on court here are playing in the world doubles. Uh, John Lumley holding the blue racket right in front of us here. John the Hare, they call him. Wakes to run, and Nikki Howe on the receiving end. Uh, John's playing with Steve Ragona, who played in the last match. Nikki's playing with a guy named Rob Fay, who's, if you don't know him, then you probably don't play this game. But uh, in my opinion, and a lot of others' opinions, the best player ever. I've never heard you weigh in on that one. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that Rob is the best player of all time. Do you know time, please? That, that would be where I would come out. Now, the the rankings after that would would be somewhat disputable and somewhat you know, there would be a, a disagreement on that probably. <laughs> but but Rob's career in the sport has just been tremendous, and there's there's no adjective I can use that. It's been, it's been epic what he's done in the sport. 
What, um, do you have a favorite match that you watched on this court? Or, or the West Court for that matter? That I've watched. Or played in, how about both? Eddie played in? You won a okay. U.S. Open here, okay, of course, okay. which is kind of a special moment um, for you. Okay, I'm sure. I will say, no, there's a, there's a I, match that I watched that I, that I thought was incredible was a uh, world championship between uh, Wayne Davies and Lockie. Um, played on this court was, was just tremendous court tennis. Um, you know, two amazing players at, at their peak. Um, and Wayne, you know, Wayne just playing. Um, both both players really playing almost almost flawlessly to to their strengths. With with Wayne just you know, barely having the edge, um, but just tremendous court tennis. And in terms of um, in terms of my own my own personal play, yeah, it, it would have to be the final of the uh, U.S. Open uh, doubles with with Tim uh, when we played um, Julian and Rory Gunn, and oh, wow. uh, uh, it was a three and a half hourish match. Uh, went went six four in the fifth, and uh, the. The entire court gallery is packed, even upstairs. Um, and uh, that, that was a tremendous match to be a part of, and um, uh, and I felt I felt privileged just to, to, to be in it. And and Tim was absolutely amazing in that match. Well, that's a hell of a team to beat. So. So um, we're going to keep you for one more game here, Mr. Clothier, whether it be the last game of the set or not. Wow. Connor, a little bit overconfident there again. Tends to hit his best shots when he's not using a ton of touch. First gallery. Good to see the youngster take a gallery, you know. A lot of these players not not overconfident in that. Whose ball is that? Two chases. Someone's got to get that. I think by tomorrow we'll work that one out. That's very contentious stuff. Um, with Mr. Scott joining us, uh, I'll have a comment on this shortly. Gallery. But the color of the court, someone's calling it the Death Star. Um, but, uh, oh, Ben Gatenbeek, who does the streaming over in England, does a great job with it. Um, the, uh, the walls are beautiful, washed oh, out. Right sir, has there ever been consideration? Yeah, he loved four yards. Painting, get, turning it black like the rackets court? I think doing something like that would be highly unlikely. Uh, I think there would be an unpredictability <laughs> about how the court would play if it was painted yeah. over. And the rackets court here was done at, at, in large part out of necessity uh, because of the issues with our, oh. with our front wall. And the ball plays, for the most part, directly off that front wall as opposed to sort of skidding along the, the, the side wall. So, uh, I, I think the chances that 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 we paint the, the court tennis court are unlikely. Well, it. it certainly photographs amazingly well. Uh, and it also, it it also yeah. plays perfectly. Yeah. And plays perfectly. Oh, nice shot. Great shot from Nikki there. Uh, Mr. Clothier, great to have you. Um, we're gonna have uh, Mr. Christopher Scott, our games committee chairman, take over. Second We're set. very lucky to have all the very top, top brass here today. Okay, Barney, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you, okay. thank you. So great finish to that set there from Nikki Howe. Thank you, Seth. lovely to receive. Level.
Freddie hasn't hit his stride you know, here. I think there's it's only a matter of time before we start seeing Freddie jumping in. How are you doing today, Mr. Scott? How's things? I am good. I am happy to be in the booth with you, Barney. It's a tough act to follow when you're following Morris Clothier. <laughs> I have uh, I have a, a you know a couple of letters of gold paint, and he's got a you know entire language alphabet filled with them. <laughs> That's true. Certainly the most decorated member ever in the history here, uh, Mars Clothier. Um, we're lucky to have him as our as our president currently. So. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? I, I, yeah, I, you're not. We're not going to hear each other. But, gotcha. Um, okay, just making sure the audio is good. I loved your comment that this is referred to as the Death Star. I've never heard that before, but it does look like it on this screen. I'll tell you. It's kind of funny. There's nothing wrong with a good evil empire. <laughs> so I must admit I hadn't I haven't watched the first set. How are these guys playing? Uh, you know, first set started slow. We've had some good points since. Um, I think people are still learning their way around the court. I want to say hi to Jane Taylor in the stream. Uh, Jane's sort of been. I I don't know Jane, but I've I've noticed her on the stream. So great to have Jane here. Great to have. Uh, George Gardner is one of the great fellows uh, for rackets, but probably plays some real tennis as well. George is uh, down in Philly, so um, I don't know if he's still there, but George, great seeing you on the stream. Uh, and like I said, tremendous showing from uh, our membership and their guests here in the gallery. Yeah, we might have to change the name in the New York Racket Club. We've now got, you know, you're from Philly, I'm from Philly, Morris is from Philly. There's a, there's a large Philly contingent here. Freddie's been playing down there. It's really amazing what Freddie's done in the past few years. Unbelievable ascension. Second gallery. Though. Rackets and tennis. I must say, last year when we held this event, I saw Freddie play a point that it was might may have been one of the prettiest points I've ever seen played, and I thought, you know, maybe someday he could battle for a world championship. Game one luck. He's certainly gonna he's certainly gonna do that in rackets, I imagine. Yeah, we we very much hope so. One game to love here, uh, Medlow and Lumley. Oh. Tidy from John there. Fifteen love. John and Freddie spend a lot of time together on the court in Philadelphia currently. Uh, and John's been a very good influence on him. Sure, Freddie's a little nervous to go against his uh, one of his mentors right now. The grasshopper. Huh. Oh, that's a nice shot. Tasty. love. We haven't seen John unload too much yet in, on the pace mm. section. Boy, the pace in the last uh, doubles match was quite something, wasn't it? Oh yeah. We love. It's great to see Steve and Camden going at it. Oh, my goodness. So great. You know, I know you like to spend some time in the grill, which I do too. But how lucky are we to be able to get this close to the best players in the world, you know? Yeah. I think it's just so different than so many racket sports where, you know, you're 40 feet away from the court and that's a good seat. You know, you're literally... You're in the court. You're in the court, basically. Yeah. Uh, which which makes score is two games. Makes the effect of uh, everything so much more graphic. Oh. Yeah, I hate to advertise the grill because it is my favorite place. I don't want anybody else to take it, but uh, that's okay. It's fantastic because this is a degree of uh, danger in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've come very close to getting smacked by a Camden. Up. <laughs> line drive. You have to pay attention whether you're there. You can't uh, 
You can't have too many drinks before you stand in the grill. And these guys can hit it from any angle, basically, too. Now, you're a big part in bringing this event here uh, to the R&T. Um, can't thank you enough for your support, not just at a committee level, but your personal financial support's been super generous as always. Um, but uh, talk, to, talk to us a little bit about, you know, how, how you see this event and how it fits in nicely here. Um, well. Well, I'll start. I'll start with you mentioned. It. I'll maybe answer that in three different ways. First, uh, it's a team effort, of course, um, and uh, there's so many people involved in it. Um, you being the primary one, and uh, as far as donation, happy to do it. Um, but you do know I give more money to rackets, right? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We'll forgive you. Uh, um, no, it's a, it's an it's an incredible game um, to support and to see all the pros uh, at this level. I mean, I think last year when we held this event, it was I think it it is certainly top three of my favorite events uh, to have ever watched at uh, at the rack and tennis over my membership and. And the other two would be, you know, world championships. So it's uh, it's it's quite exciting to uh, to see tennis at this level. Um, and uh, you know, who knows where it's going to go, right? I mean, um, you know, I just think it's important to showcase these players uh, as often as we can. Uh, and, uh, and we're happy to do that here. We're happy to do it and happy to go and watch it played at all the clubs. We want to support, obviously, every single club that's out there. It's the game that's important, that not the racket step. tennis. <laughs> yeah, we had some uh, professional development activity earlier. We had a session with our one and only Dr. Dan Lakaitis. Yeah, I, I've never been shrunk uh, before, but I got to imagine he had some good, uh, some good advice. Yeah, it's quite interesting who who involves himself very heavily in the conversation. Um, you might want to explain what what exactly that was to the listeners. Uh, the topic was resilience on court and off court. So by by by, by Dan Lakaitis, our our resident and quite exceptional psychiatrist. I think he has a doctorate, doesn't he? Yes. <laughs> you know, he's so balanced. Um, I can imagine he gave the gave everybody great insight. Oh, he's tremendous. Um, and a player of the game. Good shot from Connor there. Nice angle to see. Steady love. No, we were very lucky. Yeah, he's a, he's a very good source to have on our games committee here, too, because he's such a steady mind. Body love. Always looks at things in a very fair and balanced way. John's a little out of character still. You expecting a little more accuracy out of him? You know, he's... <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, was well, good. It was it was cue up cue up the, cue up the whiff. <laughs> um, no, I think um, John's really established himself as sort of the, uh, the next. Well, he certainly challenged for the world championship this year, and I'm sure would like to challenge again. Uh, he's had tremendous results outside of Camden. Had the best results probably over the last three years. Uh, since since returning from the pandemic, but uh, I would say Nikki's definitely getting the better of him at this stage. So, forty love, servers. forty love, second gallery. You're gonna see some form of a railroad. This uh, sidewall railroad has gotten very popular, particularly for the lefties, trying to stop the uh, the big force on the first shot. Oh, 
Oh. oh. Game three one. Very gentlemanly grill there from Mr. Lumley. Do we know what Freddie's next move is? Uh, from the topic came up. up when Mr. Clothier was in the booth, but I think uh, we know that he's not going to be challenging for the world championship in rackets this year. No, that's uh, that's been decided. That was in the rules. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't enough. qualify. So hopefully that means he's going to play a lot of court tennis <laughs> in New York, I hope. <clears throat> is, he, is he moving to New York? Well... I believe that he's going to be working at a hedge fund in the New York area. But I think that's a one year, six months, or I'm not right. quite sure. Well, hopefully he'll find enough letter writers for membership. Yeah, might be tough. <laughs> John playing very conservative, but it's working out. 4-1 they're up here in the second set. It's a good boast. What's your take on the health of the game in general, Barney? I'm glad you asked that, Mr. Scott. I think, you know, I was saying earlier, I'm 30 years into this game, and the game has never been more healthy. Um, at least in the United States, I think it's definitely fair to say. But also, like, there's there's some great momentum abroad as well. Um, obviously, Sydney might be coming online soon. Sand Valley's just come online in Wisconsin. Um, but I think um, maybe one of the reasons I'm so excited to have this event here is um, our professionals who um, – who are here, uh, we're just so lucky in this country. Um, you know, there's great professionals everywhere, but the yeah. tier of professionals here is really just unbelievable. Um, these guys are not just great players, they run great programs. It's pretty tough in most clubs in America to get a court, particularly when you want one. Um, if you're ready to play at 7 a.m. or 9 p.m., then you'll probably be able to get those. Maybe not even 7 a.m., but the game is definitely in its healthiest place that I've seen it in in Scoring. in this country for Lobo, sure. First chase, um, worse than four. Obviously, it's going to have its challenges with preservation uh, abroad. You know, a lot of the, the clubs in England, in particular, are you know old estates that have been chopped up, and it's a costly game to to up. The upkeep is very high. Um, but again, the professionals, you know, they do such a good job. There's so many, so many good ones who keep this game alive and, and grow it. And uh, certainly my favorite reason to have uh, everyone here is to, it's a chance for our members to, to sort of thank them and acknowledge not just their abilities, but what they do. You know, when I first came to New York in the late 80s, I was a squash player like most people when they come in as a youngster. Uh, <clears throat> and the squash courts were so busy that I I started going out and hitting baskets. The, 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 you know, in the late 80s and early 90s, the, the court, this court we're watching right now was, was empty much of the time. And it's the reason I started playing tennis was because the court was available. Uh, I left for work and came back seven years later in 98. And I couldn't get on the tennis court, <laughs> which is actually a blessing because that's, that's when I started playing rackets because the rackets court was open. Um, but it's really, yeah, in my history as a member of this club, it's been absolutely that's remarkable you. to see what's happened to tennis since I joined. And, you know, the amazing things is that these numbers stayed up straight through the pandemic and have continued to grow. Much of that is due to our great professionals here, but... I think it's also just such a great 
the enthusiasm amongst the membership for the game itself. Yeah, 100%. We've got great Wilson supportive Desi. members. Constantly having tournaments. Right now we're in our club championship season. Um, you know, if I had to take a guess at it, it's probably five to 600 matches we're playing in that club championship um, in four months. Uh, it's pretty tough to get a court, but it, it's amazing to see. And it's great to give every every player in the club has an opportunity to compete. Uh, the handicap system is amazing. You know, it really is a great equalizer. Um, and it helps the game to grow again. What's your favorite court, Barney? Whew. I mean, I would have to say New York right now. Um, as far as, uh, you know, obviously, the, you, know, you have to say that because I'm sitting here, but, I've, you know, what, do you, what are the courts you really enjoy playing on and I, how do they differ? I love, uh, so Tambor, uh, Tambor Angle is a huge one. Uh, you get really steep Tambors like Tuxedo. Uh, it's very true, but it plays deeply, kind of like that ball. Um, you know, penthouse angle, size of Dadon, proximity of Dadon toward main wall or not is uh, one that I've just started thinking about. Um, when Westwood came online uh, just a year and a bit ago, Second they battery. moved the Dadon away from the main wall to make the main wall dead on a little tougher. Um, Interesting. So the distance between the main wall and the start of the right-hand side, if you're the server of the dead on, is, is wider? It's wider, uh, which, you know, with the oh, sort oh, of the shot from John there, it's wider so that um, it's a little tougher to hit main wall dead ons, which has become a very popular shot, uh, extremely oh. popular, you'd say. These guys are hitting them in within six inches almost every time. Um, but uh, to, to, to better answer your question, obviously I grew up in Philadelphia. I have tremendous love for that court and uh, that club. Um, one of my favorites, believe it or not, is Hobart. I don't know if you've you spent any time in Hobart. I have not. Seconds. Feels like a kind of place that, that you've, you've got you to gotta visit, I think. All right. But uh, they got a beautiful blue court there. That, I have fond memories. I grew up playing in Clothier Cups and and and, uh, and Van Allen Cups. Um, uh, sorry, Clothier in particular for uh, for Australia. And uh, Hobart's very near and dear to me. I have a lot of close friends there. Um, so so yeah. Um, the the receivers second gallery chase. Okay. On the chase. 40 love, second gallery again. And Newport's much smaller than the others, is it not? They say that. Um, you know, I don't. Oh, I, I, tend, I tend to think it feels small, but I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the. 15 40. Ball hits the back wall, comes out very quickly there, I think. Um, perhaps it's a yard shorter. I mean, one thing that is kind of interesting is in our court, there is a yard past the first gallery, which would technically be the line, but the line is then another yard further away. So I don't think that's true in a lot of courts. Um, I think it's very hard to, to it's, it's very hard for me to put in context which courts I really enjoy because it they play so differently. Um, I would is, I would love to kinda, get which is kind of great, right? I mean, it's kind of neat to have. I mean, it's sort of the nature of the game, right? You're playing in a cloister in a monastery. They're not all going to be the same. That's fantastic, 100. percent I think it also. Uh, Rewarding different skill sets is a positive thing because it means that uh, if, if 
you want to compete like John and Nick do at the very top of this game, then you've got to um, be good at everything. You, you've got to learn how to do mm -hmm. everything. Okay. <laughs> With the exception of that. <laughs> and the second set, six games. I would like to lobby for Newport to uh, take the digital clock out of the grill. Uh, really, <laughs> it, it's, it's a, aesthetically, uh, I, for some reason, just bothers me. I Starting love that court. I think it's an unbelievable place. But uh, maybe someday they'll they'll take the digital clock out of the grill. Well, I, I understand that nobody there really knows how to tell time, so that they, they stay on the court far too long, and uh, that's probably they right. have to have it there in order to make sure that the next the next team of foursome can come on. But I don't think Rolex will be sponsoring a tennis uh, match there anytime soon. <laughs> what would the monks think? <laughs> Love what the monks think. Yeah. We can maybe get a rosary bead counter in there. So reminding everyone, we're starting at three three games all in this final set. So it's going to be a bit of a sprint. We had the same thing in the last doubles match, oh. which uh, Camden and Camden Revere and Noah Motes won. In a very exciting third set. Oh, what happened there? Probably not making the highlight reel that one for Connor, but. Uh, maybe Adrian sewed that ball. Yeah. <laughs> someone someone sewed it, that funny. I only say that because Adrian sews all our balls. Quite a lot of them. <laughs> Thirty fifteen. Come on. Two right Great shot. Great shot. Good rally going here. Oh, pretty. Nice cut. Well done. I, I got that one. <laughs> 30, 15, two yards. I didn't get that one. Said we got 700 people on the stream right now. So uh, chime in and say hello. Wow. Are you serious? 700 people? That's fantastic. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> I think it says seven. Sorry. <laughs> chime in and say hello, everyone. We're looking forward to seeing uh, seeing our friends around the world. Oh, good rally here. shot John but Freddie will definitely be disappointed there so two doubles going to the third set is this is this fixed uh, is this already all predetermined do you have a line on this or? no I mean <laughs> just trying to play so I will say here. I don't know for transparency's sake we did we did do a draft this year uh, so National League used to take the format of clubs. Receivers League. Pros would play for their club. Um, I think a few things have happened that have made that complicated. Um, uh, but I will say that I oh. believe Freddie was taken first in his bucket. And it's for this reason here. So we're going to evaluate Nikki Howell's pick for sure based upon how this ends. Out of court. I'm lucky there. Ken Fortin James on the stream, hello. Jake McCray. Time. Ken, uh, former USCTA treasurer, 
Did a great job with that. We owe him tremendously. Jake McCray, member of our Deep armed up. forces. How's it going, Jake? That's pretty good right-handed. Do you see that? <laughs> There's a fault, but see how long this takes. Good gap. Ooh. Good Freddie. Fantastic. Level of play seems to have uh, picked up now that it's getting serious. Oh, uh, yeah, a lucky. Fifteen long. Freddie's starting to play like Ben Stein there. starting to bounce there. a bit, yeah. 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 <laughs> ben Stein's never hit a ball off his feet ever. He's, uh, play he's playing, is he not? Is he playing tonight? Uh, yeah, he plays he every is. night. That's right, so there you go. Tonight he plays eight Rob Whitehouse, yeah. 8 o'clock. So exciting to watch him play. Oh, yeah. Not recommended for kids at home. But <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, bad communication there. Yeah. 30 15. We talked about uh, relationships and uh, communication in Dr. Dan's meeting. He said it was the first time it may have been mentioned uh, in the private rooms. Um, you know, it was a very emotional chat. But anyway, um, <laughs> clearly that communications uh, aspect didn't, didn't sink home with the receivers here. 40-15 in a chase. More than a yard worse than the last. We've got Peter Powell on the stream. I'm not sure whether that's Peter Powell senior or junior, but. I imagine it's, uh, well, you never know, right? Either one of them would be fantastic to have. Hello to you both. Hello to you both. Mr. Powell wants to know why you like watching from the grill so much. Well, it's, 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 you speak, well, it's but what we were saying earlier. You are actually in the court. You are. You can also talk to the players the on the receiving the side, which I enjoy to do. Uh, you know, cheer oh. them on, coax them on. Um, you literally are at that stage, less than eight feet from the man guarding the grill. And then it is the level of danger too, which keeps you focused on what's happening. I guess it's. You know, it's all of that, but it's it's where it is in the court. Yeah. You know, particularly in doubles, the play uh, is 80% of the time directed toward the grill. Yeah. So you're you're not just in the court, you're but you're see, in the you're point the balls, a lot. Yeah. And I, I find also, uh, since the Pels are on the line, we have to mention the Pell room. <laughs> um, when I'm in the Pell room, there's a lot of chatter and banter and uh, distraction, quite frankly. Uh, and uh, it's just nice to be, the grill is you're just one person in there. It's solitary and you really you get in and enjoy the, I agree, enjoy the action. It's particularly good with doubles because you have someone guarding your, uh, guarding your, your gallery. Look at that. Oh, wow. Just Almost. missed it. Oh, that's a nice pick. Connor getting involved here. Good defense over there. Now that's tough, quite a shot. Tough ball. Quite tough. a shot from Nicky. Hey. Yeah, scraped it off the wall. Four games old. If that is indeed Mr. Pell Sr., I don't know if you know this or not, but he's going to be representing the yes. U.S. 80s team, the Munoz I, team. And he's taking it seriously. He's been in here training, and I'm sure he's at home lifting weights right now while he's watching this. Yeah, yeah, he's probably doing push-ups, sit-ups, calisthenics, all the above. Get out of there, sir. 
first of all, for, for skill level, but there's nobody better than to represent than Mr. Pell Sr., uh, absolutely wonderful guy. I had the unbelievable pleasure of playing two years in the 120s with him, and I don't, I don't think I've ever had a better partner. Yeah, he's amazing. We've got Dave Christensen, one of our Pro-Am patrons. Mr. Christensen, great to have you on the stream. Um, great to have you in the Pro-Am this year. Looking for a big showing from you. Well, good point there. For all, things are getting heated For here. For all, love this. Oh, that's a good boast. 30, 15. Finding that gap between, finding two backhands in fact with that. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he couldn't get it. The chaser oh, yeah. hit him. John, a little oh, bit dejected chase. by that. Did you see Camden's? I up? did off yeah. the off the first gallery ridge, right <laughs> into the dead on. It's my favorite shot so far this uh, tournament. Forty fifteen and a chase of one yard. Knowing him, he might have intended it. Yeah, it seems to it seems to get a lot go his way. It tends not to be. It's pretty hard to call it lucky when he does it so often. I was just gonna say, you know, when you're when you're that good, it's hard to say things are lucky. Having said that, I'd like him to save a few of those lucky shots for <laughs> tomorrow. 40, 15, one yard, service lead. That's a nice, oh. nice looking serve there. Nikki puts great work on his uh, on his giraffe. Nikki was a uh, golf professional before he was a court tennis professional, so no lack of talent there. Knows how to hit a ball. Game, service lead, five games to four. All right, now it's getting serious. Five four. We're at the business end here. Good shot. Nice choice to take a backhand there, huh? <laughs> 15 love. Oh, it's pretty tough to make these guys play backhands. <laughs> There's a fault, maybe. What'd 15 you think? Pretty close. Good rally. Yeah, fantastic. Indeed, it's Mr. Pell Jr. on the stream saying that uh, he needs you back for the 120. <laughs> saying that his father needs you back for the 120 because they lost love and love in the first round last time. <laughs> well, that's why I had to stop playing with Mr. Pell Sr. because young Pell got too old and was able to play with him. I knew that was coming. I was just the filler. There's a chase pending last time. Big points here, big points. Huge. It's sort of great, great to see the look on these boys' faces. Um, what, are, what are people thinking right now? You're not going to find many more top clutch players than a few of these guys. Oh, look at that here. take off the tambour. Beautiful. Great retrieving. The intensity level is so much better than we saw three games ago. 
shot from Mickey there. Oh, oh. damn near got it. Here it comes. Played. My goodness, if I could hit one of these volleys, I'd be happy. They've hit 12 of them. Oh, oh and in. in. What is that in? Look at that. Unbelievable. And Chase lost gallery. There's uh, Ted Ganeos in the side, our tournament chairman. Ted Ganeos, uh, such an important figure in, in not just our community here, but in the broader court tennis community nowadays. Hey, he's sort of the godfather. He kind of looks like the godfather too, doesn't he? Conciliaria is yeah, what he likes to be called. But. Exactly. But yeah. he's Greek though, so I'm not sure that's yeah, actually no. culturally appropriate. I don't know, it's Mediterranean. Score is uh, 40, yeah, no, a huge, a huge figure. Um, Lost Gallery manages that dinner in December. Is a huge supporter of the pros and the game. Forty thirty servers lost. Not sure what we do without him on the games committee here. Actually, no, he's great. That's good serve. Is this five, five games, games all. all? Okay. Jen's final game. All right. Final so, uh, game. if Fire someone up. made you take a bet here, who are you going to take? I'm going with the receivers. They seem to have a little little something extra right now. Oh my god, look at that take. That may be the shot of the tournament thus far. Wow. Can we pull that Freddy, up on a replay? <laughs> I mean that was that was pretty good, Freddie. You hear the chatter coming from the moping mic and the uh, dead on. <laughs> See his face. Yeah. No but problem. again, but again, you know, you could say luck, but that's uh, that is pure 100% skill. And as you said earlier, clutch. Wow. Oh my goodness! Look at that. Great guts. Oh my goodness! Come on, step in there. Dirty love. Some more, love. more great gets there. I'd love to see this come back to 30 all. Wow, good got. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 15 30. Who wants it? Time, please. Oh, that's very close. We got. I think Nikki would have liked to probably have that ball. It's a problem being so athletic and young, you can just jump up, you know, several feet in the air and convince yourself you should play that ball. I don't have that problem anymore. Out of court. <laughs> match ball here. So we're at match point. 40 To the receivers, as you predicted. Look at that hey, power. Uh, Unbelievable. Match. What a oh, great match. match. Six four, one six, six five. You know, you were saying that, uh, you know, we used to do this uh, clubs playing against each other, but I think it's fantastic. We've got these teams, and there's all these boys love playing with one another. They're all great friends, and uh, 
That's really what makes this game so special. Absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Scott. Maybe we'll get you uh, for lucky a little bit later in the tournament for a couple words. Maybe we'll get Mr. Powell, indeed, hopefully. Yeah, we'll um, get him in here. This is my first time in the booth, so I appreciate you having me. It's a real honor to be here. Great to have you. Thank you for making this all happen here. Um, next up, we've got James Stout and Leon Smart, which will be a hell of a match. We'll hope to see you in the grill. Uh, we're lucky to have uh, Mary Livingston, our USCTA president, going to join for a bit of commentary. But in the meantime, we're going to take a very short break here. And I would love to just say thank you to John, who helped the range. He's sitting here with us, our technician, um, helped the range so that you all could watch this and see this. And uh, it's great to have him as part of the team. So Jonathan um, Teradis to the best here at the r &T. Thanks, everybody. And I look forward to uh, seeing the rest of this tournament. Thanks, Barney. Awesome. Thank you.
Uh, good evening, everyone. We're back. Um, sorry, a point late. Uh, we've got Leon Smart and James Stout here. This is uh, Team Team Dadon versus uh, versus Team Winning Gallery. The uh, second match in this uh, in this uh, series of three. Uh, the first match went to Team Dadon, uh, Nikki Howe and Freddie Bristow. With tight match. Uh, I'm very lucky to be joined by our USCTA president, Miss Mary Livingston. Hello, Mary, everyone. how are you doing this evening? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, braved the rain here in New York City, and I'm very happy to be snugly in the commentary booth with you tonight, Barney. Oh, very <laughs> kind of you. Um, uh, tell us a, a little bit about, um, you know, you played a huge part in supporting the professionals at the USCTA. Uh, you've been very supportive of uh, this event, um, first the pandemic and now uh, existing last year and this year in New York. Um, tell us uh, when you think of National League, um, what, what, does it, what does it mean to you? And, um, what, uh, what are some of the attributes that you, yeah. that you really like about it? So I actually saw, so the first the first match that I ever saw of professional level tennis was a National League match in London in 1999. Wow. And um, it was, you know, one of these sort of run of the mill rotating matches that they have um, in their style of National League. Um, and I remember being absolutely thrilled by it how fast the ball was moving and how hard they were hitting. And I'd, I'd played some junior tennis at that point, maybe for like six months, I think. And um, so knew enough about the game to be very impressed <laughs> um, by it. And so when I think of National League, that is one of the first things that I think of. And of course, when we brought the format and the sort of brand National League over to the U.S., that was what we were trying to emulate is having – just a huge number of very high level matches um, on a regular basis at different clubs. And that was sort of the format that we started with. Um, and that's very much what the, you know, what happens in England and, and they rotate, um, rotate Last around and top amateurs are involved Hello. and the pros are involved. And it's, you know, it goes on for a season, I believe. And I think that's still the way that they do it. Um, and, you know, we tried that in sort of fits and starts for a long time. I mean, I think, honestly, you'd probably well, remember this better than I did. 10, 15 years of trying to make it kind of work on a, a rotating basis. And I think, you know, it was hard to get people to different places. You know, I remember Lost flights gallery. being canceled, snowstorms. Um, all different things happening sort of throughout the season. It just, it was, um, it was hard. So it never kind of took off, I think, in the way that we wanted it to, even though it was great. You know, when the matches did happen, it was obviously yeah, great to get high level tennis across the clubs. Um, and like many things that we found, you know, the pandemic fought, you know, forced us to rethink some things and to get creative and to think about, you know, how we might do things differently and what would work better for us rather than, you know, trying to just um, mimic the English, you know, multi-level National League that they have. And um, I think that we've come up with a really good, a really good and interesting solution that we continue to tweak. Um, and I think that, you know, everything that we can do to incentivize really high level play um, is exciting. And, um, and, you know, and I think we incentivize really high level play with both the format, which I think is really cool the way we've tweaked it for those that, you know, may or may not have heard we did a draft this year, which you led Barney. Um, and so the teams, you know, people 
the captains were choosing the teams, which and then and then we've also been able to raise a lot of money, and I think that that's it's wonderful to see the support um, here at the R and T, and then it's wonderful to Both see the, in the, chase. Um, One, two. the support we're able to give at the USCTA level uh, with the national fund, and it all kinds of comes together in a in a really fun, exciting few days. Well, we can't thank you guys enough for your uh, your contribution and support. Um, the uh, 40, the league um, one and two. the league uh, has been amazing over the years. Uh, I think the super event is a completely different feel. Um, there's positives and negatives mm. to both, but we certainly love having Lost all the pros it, here. Uh, we don't get them all the time, so um, you know, thank you for your support here. Now to this match. Uh, Team Stout, Leon Smart, not separated by much in handicap here. Um, Leon is obviously playing a lot, lot, lot more tennis uh, than James probably ever did, even in his prime. But um, James is a stupendous athlete, um, maybe the best all-around racket sport player that, that we know. That I in, real, know in real but, life, yeah. But in real life, it might be true as well. I mean, James is a former longtime racket world champion, singles and doubles. Uh, he's also uh, been number one in double squash very recently and mm. may, may, may go back there at some stage. Um, uh, court tennis is definitely not his f main focus nowadays. Uh, we did get him on court a couple Love times this week. Um, and he's got unbelievable ability. So let's see how he deals with Leon here. Yeah, and I think, Barney, what do you, like, what do you think that the pros, when you... Lost it? When you see love, Stout Gary. on the other side of the draw and other side of the net from you, like what do you think the the reaction is um, from the average pro? Is, is he the spoiler? Is he the, the unknown? You just don't know what's no, going to happen? Oh, he's a complete unknown, <laughs> I think. Um, you know, uh, I certainly know that when he and I play, we're very modest in our betting. But, um, <laughs> You will not see him try any harder for five dollars than than when he I, and he and I are on court. Um, he'll be diving and screaming. And, um, and which game is this? Any one, honestly. Um, I try not to go in the rackets court with him. Fair. It's just you know not not very pleasant. Um, but uh, he is an unbelievable competitor. Uh, I'd like to see him get into this match a little bit uh, because when he wants to. Mm. He can just really dictate how things go. Um, yeah, wow. like that. Uh, 15, 30. But Leon's off to a uh, good start here. He's uh, two love, 30-15 up. He, uh, he's had good results. Um, what was his? Uh, what was his U.S. Open trajectory for Leon? Who did he ended up end up? Do you remember? Did Leon, he beat, he beat Machu, I believe. Oh, okay. Um, which is a good win for him. Yeah. Because um, he's only a little bit better than Machu. Um, I'd say they're a coin flip. Okay. Um, at least in handicap, you're talking about less than a point of difference. Uh, Leon played great that day. I saw some of the match. Um, uh, can't remember who he succumbed to in the end, but um, <laughs> needless to say, once you get through... It's pretty deep once you get into the, the, uh, the quarters. The quarters, yeah. yeah. So I think we, you know, we all know yes. James may be the best in raw talent. Um, maybe, maybe Bristow or someone like that is the, the raw talent. Um, but what do you think Leon uh, does best and will need to do a lot of? In this match. Leon's a great volleyer. Yeah. Uh, he's turned into a great server. He can retrieve. He's very quick. Um, he's starting to do a bit more of that, um, which I think is very important for him if he wants to continue to ascend. Uh, James a little bit of bad luck there. He got the bottom edge of the bando. Uh, looked awfully, like, looked like a lot like a camera to me, but maybe I'm wrong, you know? <laughs> Mary, what else is happening in the world of court tennis that we need to know about? Um, Advantage receiver, Chase just had a, a Bathurst Cup. Um, 
sent a young lady, sent a few young ladies over yes. to play for the rest of the world, mm -hmm. which is great. And they won. And they won, indeed. Uh, your friend Zanti was in the mix there. She absolutely was. She's coming later tonight. She's actually texting me right now. Great. Um, she's on her way. And uh, Emily. Emily Young from Emily Newport. Young, yeah. Who's getting, you know, getting better and better. Um, an apprentice in the Newport club. Great to have a young lady uh, involved in the professional side of our game. It is. And I think, you know, the more and more that we invest in the game overall. I mean, you've heard um, me say this, and I probably said it enough that people, listen, some of the people listening have even heard me say this, but I just, I very much believe in three games you know, the rising tide lifting all ships. Mm. So I think that if you... You say that a lot. Is that a Newport kind of thing? Is this like because uh, of your sailing... Uh so it's it's probably one of those things I say so often and that I don't even I don't even think it's 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 strange I think I hope that that's something everyone everyone can follow but it's it's a matter of I think you know the way that we've been able to invest with this generosity of all our supporters the way that we've been able to invest in the game um, in the last five six eight years um, and keep that that you know keep that slide um, moving up um, is going to be, you know, it's it's an investment. It's not, you know, it can feel maybe like it's in, like it's money in, money out. But I actually think it's an investment um, in the professionals. And I think if you invest in the professionals, you retain the best professionals. And if you retain the best professionals, which I do think we're lucky to do here in the, in the U.S. and in our clubs, then you are um, developing the better players. And I think the, another way that we've been able to invest is with you know, the generosity of the Grassy family through the Player Development Fund you know? and the Preservation Foundation um, and invest in you know, our, younger, our younger players and our best players. And they're then competing at the Bathurst level. They're then competing in the Van Allen Clothier, um, which we were thrilled to sweep um, last summer. Okay. You know, I I have to up. ask, were you ever on a vi winning Van Allen or Clothier Cup team, yes, Barney? Yes, I take offense to that. <laughs> I was on a few. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Pell was my captain. <laughs> Is Mr. Pell on? He was. Oh, I hope okay. he's still with us. But, um, <laughs> Uh, no, I w I won a couple, two clothiers and a Van Allen, maybe. Um, and how many did you play in, Barney? A lot. I'd rather not say. <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you, like, off the top of my head. Um, but, but what I will we say. We lost a few, right, in your in your era? Indeed. Like, <laughs> we went from having some very good teams to playing some very good teams. Um, but I think. We did. There were some, they're exceptional. There were some all generational players on the other side. Indeed, indeed. I think, um, you know, when I look back at those events, the, the people who were involved with them wind up being the people who run the game today. No, um, that's true. And, and, and that's why they became, while it was less successful in the actual uh, record of wins and losses, I was tremendously successful in making some lifelong friends. and um, uh, uh, But going well, back go. to your comments around the investment, yeah. um, I think you're definitely, you know, in my time, <laughs> in my time in the game as a professional, certainly, and uh, my time in governance, which um, I, don't, I don't technically have a title in USCTA or anything like that. I serve a little bit on some committees. Advisor. <laughs> Maybe I'm Game somewhere five, in there. Uh, but but uh, as from an IRTPA standpoint, an organization that I am uh, very close to, and a foundation standpoint, the, the people like yourself who are contributing in the states these days are making huge inroads to, uh, uh, to, to quality of life for professionals, to uh, uh, quality of, of, of industry and... Um, it's it's massively appreciated. So um, I know, you know, you you've said it before. You want to see the U.S. Open as the um, 
the, the preeminent event um, in, in tennis, which I think it has been and yep. will continue to be. Um, it was a wonderful event in Philly this year. So, so kudos to you, but um, just great to, great to have so many volunteers like yourself who give so much time uh, in making sure that uh, our experience is, is, is what it is. What a shot from James there. Yeah. He's going to need a hell of a lot more than that, though. Down five love here. He's got better than one in 15 love. This is going to be an uphill battle for him. I think that, you know, but I think that I'm, I, you know, uh, Jane Lippincott has made this point in the past. Uh, so this is not an original thought on my part, but, you know, Jane has been around the game for uh, Chase, a long time. And certainly she's so involved with the Preservation Foundation. But, you know, when we think back to the money that, that John Lieb gave to Newport or gave to the, you know, professional junior development in Newport in the late 90s, which led to the sort of recruiting effort which brought me into the game. Um, it brought, eventually brought my sister into the game, others, it brought Pat Winthrop into the game. And there are just a number, you know, some people, of course, did fall away, but there are, um, there are still, you know, there are still people very engaged as a result of that. And that's a, another example of investment. Um, and that was an you know, early example of, 15, of how we, you know, what we can do if we you know, sort of focus our efforts in a little bit more um, specific specific way and so i think that's true of juniors it's true of the pros and um and it's true of the elite players and it's 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 really exciting that we've been able to accomplish um recently so, so we have um we have james here not playing a very aggressive style which probably <laughs> isn't helping him too much i think he's going to need to throttle up a bit um Leon. Is he a slow starter, a la Novak? Or is I do he think he's a slow shot. starter quite often. Uh, but he's letting uh, Leon here, who... 40, 15, Leon's probably like Chase 140 pounds gallery. soaking wet, uh, <laughs> be the aggressor. So, yeah, probably needs to change. Not to say that James is, you know, much more than that, but... He's got to win this game, James. A little help from the bando edge oh. there. Oh wow. No, down, down. Oh. oh. <laughs> game one game to five. One and five, he's on the board. And Hopefully. is that Tony marking? Who's marking? That's Tony Hollands, say? yeah. One five. <laughs> it's all amazing the dynamics in this. Um, event, you know, Leon used to work for Tony. Tony used to work for James. <laughs> uh, it's a special. Um, oh, they played lot. How nice are they? how nice are these guys? We have a special interconnectedness, right? We do. <laughs> you know, it's uh, there's a lot of a lot of different bonds um, going back. You know, a long time, and it's it's what it's what really makes this a lifetime game, which I think is one of the best the best things about it. Hundred um, percent. Family game, lifetime game. Uh, you're a perfect example of that, of course. You know, Tanfield tradition. Um, but it's. We were talking about it with Mr. Clothier and uh, Nikki and John and Freddie were playing. Mr. Clothier obviously, you know, comes from uh, his father was such an important person in the game, and, then, <laughs> and who know, played my with my great grandfather in Philadelphia. Is and that so right? it, yeah, so it's all, you know, I have it's all a very, um, you know, forty fifteen chases five and, they, and uh, they played sports together for years. So it's. Uh, yeah, there's nothing quite thing. like our game, is there? No. Oh, wow, James. That was a good shot. Good. Well done. <laughs> and game one, game five. Well, he won his first Ooh, game for the second time. <laughs> so I see James has the Cheltenham pink on the, the grip. He does, I do know. He, he loves pink on the grip. I, he does think pink is yeah. the grippiest. He told me that once. That's a hot tip for anybody that might want grippier. Yes, I do the buying here. <laughs> and, um, you know. 
Is he the only one that wants sort to get grips? Sort of destroys my inventory. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh. Chase, uh, worst in the last gallery, 15 love. Yeah, I, when I'm when I'm counting, it's not a pleasant process inventory, but when you have to count the grips, there's there's never any pink grips left. <laughs> um, worst in one, two. Chase James it. squirrels them away. He's got some very odd habits for an adult. <laughs> um, Does hiding. he have a bag of grips somewhere? Yeah, he's got some. I don't. Yeah. I don't, he's got a trunk of weird things. <laughs> Um, 15 observer, first chase is worse than the last gallery. Do we, uh, do we throw it to any questions in the chat? Anyone have any questions in the chat? Jane, Jane Taylor t saying how well Leon's been playing, which is absolutely true. Leon's loving life right now. Oh, Peter Pell did ask, what do you think are the keys to making a great ball? Oh, good question. What about... Oh, what are the keys to a great ball? Um, I think um, it's very important to have, have a very tight cover on the ball. I think to me, if you want to cut the ball or, or add pace to it, the cover needs to mm. be very tightly um, stretched. Yes, but like um, it needs to be very tightly meshed to the ball, if you will. Um, I learned most of my sewing from Steve Ragona. Rob Whitehouse would tell you I learned from him, but obviously that's <laughs> not the case. Um, and uh, Steve was always very emphatic about how many times we were going to put the needle through the ball. Um, uh, I think spacing and stitching uh, doesn't doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be too too far apart or too close, but it needs to be consistent. Um, I generally prefer closer stitches. Um, mm. You know, I, I once considered myself one of the top ball makers in the world, and now I leave that to my um, my crew here. Uh, who I'm very lucky to have such good professionals with, with us here. Uh, well, that's because you've got to count grips and do inventory. That's right. You know, someone's got to try and find new pink grips, but... Um, Adrian's an unbelievable seller, as is uh, Josh is an unbelievable seller, uh, Pete is as well. Um, you know, well, I think the people underestimate how in-depth the ball-making process mm. is. Um, you know, I remember when I first took a job, good James, shot from James there, good shot, James. What's good shot. Uh, when I first took a job here, my wife and I moved to Princeton so she could <laughs> commute to Philadelphia, and I commuted from Princeton. Um, and these ladies on the train would be knitting, and they'd all take great interest in me sewing the ball on the train and had great wow. input for me about, like, you, know, you, know, you know, you can buy these at Modell, <laughs> and, you know, all sorts of stuff. So uh, my, my, my ball sewing turned into ball sewing uh, with sunglasses on and headphones uh, <laughs> so that I didn't have to talk about it with too many people. But oh! 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 Same guy. Deuce. <laughs> So James looking um getting a little life in him. You might say that. <laughs> He's not showing much animation yet. No. Chase worse than the last gallery juice. Hanging on to this set. Yeah, well this is a big point right here. I think this will obviously this will govern what happens. Well. Needed that. I realized I haven't been switching. Advantage. Leon's been dominating with this cut volley. It's driving, uh, driving James insane. It's not the easiest to uh, go from a squash court onto this court. No. And uh, do you think Leon's the best lawn tennis player? The, or who do you think? What do you think, Rob Fay? I don't know. I mean, Steve Advantage used to be very Chase good at one point. I mean, you're all good, but. I don't think I'm particularly good, but you um, hit the ball too hard. Yep, <laughs> goes in the, the court's too small. <laughs> court's um, too small for yeah. you. I mean a wall. Usually outside the fence, mm. looking for the balls. It's like uh, just like golf, which is why I don't play that either. But um, <laughs> nice shot from James. Ooh, good get Leon. Receivers point. Wow, that was big. 
worse than last, and he had last gallery. 40 all, big point. Leon's gonna go high. Hopefully James can wait on this ball. Oh, it was in, big save. Leon's working hard here. Oh! oh. Well left. <laughs> Face the first gallery. 40 out. Leon gave a little look there. I don't know if he was too thrilled to, to have his life flash in front of him. <laughs> it was, it was, players. no, it was, it was, uh, it was completely legal. I think it was. It was. It was. It was not. You know, not at his head. So I think he would have lived through whatever the problem was. <laughs> <laughs> there it is for James. All right. All right. I actually think what took him by surprise is that James hit the ball more than 20 miles an hour <laughs> the first time. The <laughs> that was the most pace we've seen so far. One and two. How much rackets is James playing these days? Not a lot. He played with his brother in the Western Open. Mm -hmm. um, his brother is quite good, Chris. Uh, he's got lots of brothers. Oh. Yeah, he's got some brothers. Um, three. Uh, but he struggled with some injuries recently, for sure. Um, and... Uh, his double squash is certainly his priority, so. Yep. When's the double squash season run? Is it, when does it end? Not quite could get there. Or is it uh, all year? So, yeah, I mean, it, there's a couple sort of um, big tournaments in the summer. One of them's in Nantucket, which won't shock you. <laughs> um, there's a couple in the fall, but it's generally uh, sort of November to around oh. this time of year. April. Probably not unlike the busy season in court tennis, really. Right. So 15 love to James here. He's um, showing signs of life and interest, um, which is great to see. Chase two yards. Good shot. 15 love, two chases. Not the best return from James there. <clears throat> I think I think that the chase had been inputted wrong. They had a first gallery, so. Which serves do you think work well on this court? The high serve's quite good. I mean, there's not many taller courts than this one. Mm, that's true. It's Par Paris is very tall, right? Which Lost is it. which is taller? Do you think? Thirty fifteen. Taller? Yeah. He's asking Adrian Kemp, who's standing in the corner. Our uh, pro rep, who's about at, to take over. He's not not a uh, not asking me uh, how high the ceiling in Paris is. <laughs> they do things big there, you know that guy Eiffel. <laughs> he did the ceiling there. Yeah, see, look at that. A little bit of history. You get everything with the commentary these days. How many people do we have online? Um, 35. Okay. Yeah. Hello. I think uh, they must not have heard that you were going to be in the box to commentate. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm t yeah, we can, you know, as I say, okay, answer six, questions. Okay, you probably should uh, be on the Twitter, I think. Uh, Mary, I'm going to leave you. Uh, we will... Uh, Again, thank you for everything you do for our game and the professionals in particular. Um, but uh, lovely to have you here. And uh, taking over for me are 
professional representative for the USCTA, Mr. Adrian Kemp. Well, thank you very much, Bonnie. It's uh, it's great to be here. Adrian's it's looking very event. dapper, by the way. He's got he's got the full the full. Uh, he looks like Chris Collingsworth or something, you know, in the <laughs> in his suit and tie. Thank you. I think I, I feel like most people only ever see us in whites. So That's true. It's, it's sometimes a bit of a shock <laughs> that you know we do have some kind of civilian uh, yeah, clothes. <laughs> civilian clothes. No, everybody's all dressed up. It's uh, it's great. And of course, here at the R and T, people actually wear ties, which is you know as we all know, is not happening so much in the outside no, world no so much. No. <laughs> That's very, it's very exciting. Well, we're excited to have you up here, Mary, for, for this evening and tomorrow. Yes. Part of tomorrow. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how much I can get to tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I just, Barney and I, we touched on sort of the format and uh, how this is developed. And I just think it's, it's really fun. Um, and great, you know, example of of being creative and figuring out what works for us. Um, because we were talking about some of the challenges that were associated with, uh, you know, the more traditional sort of National League format that we come from in the UK. First um, a yard and worse than the second gallery. You know, this is this is working out better for us right now, and it's oh. it's exciting, and I think. Things like we implemented, like the draft and uh, different uh, different things, or you know, continued innovation. Yeah, I think the format it's it's you know slightly different from last year, mm. where um, you know the the number one guys were playing. Fifty love, second chase well. is better than two. The match format was slightly different, um, and I think there's probably some tweaks that again we'll figure out at the end of. You know, come Friday morning when we sort of sit down and the dust has settled and we really look back and, you know, have some, uh, have some ideas about how to change it. Um, yeah. What, one thing the pros are definitely never uh, shy about is... Oh. Sharing? Sh sharing their views <laughs> on, uh, you know, what, what, what can be done to make <laughs> their lives better. Um, so, I, you we've, know... We've a very, uh, <laughs> you know, lively discussions about some of these, uh, some of these things. Yeah, but no, I, I do, I do feel that, uh, that in the uh, probably 25 years I've been around the game, that the pros are very shy a lot, and they are never, <laughs> they never share, <laughs> they never share how they feel about anything. Okay. So, um, but you know, it's, I always think Plus about, 30%. I always think about when I, you know, listen to a podcast or a news story about sort of pros in other sports. And, you know, I don't think it's really any different. We're just much closer to it right. in our special little game. Um, and it's one, of the cool, it's one of the cool things about it is that, uh, um, that that's how it is. And I, I'm quite certain because it's been covered, you know, worldwide that Novak Djokovic complains that's quite you. a bit about, <laughs> about the professional association in his game as well. Mm. So, you know, nothing, nothing's too different. No, it isn't. Um, what do you think the members, you know, when you talk to the members in advance of this, uh, what do you think the members here at the R&T are most, you know, looking forward to in terms of seeing these matches and, and getting um, getting a sort of a little bit of an insight into top tennis, which they get a few times a year, but not not quite like this. More than yeah, worse than the yeah. last gallery I mean, two we, chases. we have some good amateur stuff. Right. You know, the, the club has the Whitney Cup, right. which I think is always going to be you know, one of those weekends that very special is yeah, is very special, and a lot of the members are involved and has such a great tradition. Um, and then the Silver Racket weekend, uh, obviously, there's some great amateur play again there. Mm. But I think in terms of actually watching, you know, some of the guys who have been on the court today, Steve Agona, Camden Riviere, Nikki, Howe, John Lumley, first chases the like door. That, that level of play is something we don't get to see here all that often. Um, so people are really excited and, you know, I think a lot of the guys who came last year and a lot of the guys who, you know, know these, these players from, you know, whether they've come to watch them at the US Open or been 
Um, you know, been here for other National League matches. They, they're here because they realize like, this is actually a really great opportunity to, you know, to watch those guys like, in action. And even, you know, someone who's kind of fairly close to a lot of the pros and, you know, Game, I've seen seven games to two. Steve Agona play 50 times. Right. It's, still, it's still really cool to, you know, to be there. And, you know, I was watching a little bit from the winning gallery earlier on in his doubles match um, with Camden. It's, it's cool to watch these guys play. They're, As a chase, the they're second so really good. Oh, Steve's, <laughs> Steve's very good at doubles. <laughs> Um, and I think, you know, I mean, gosh, uh, he's, I, I mean, I think he, is he 45 these days? He doesn't look it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't he's getting day fitter and fitter. Third. I mean, I, I mean we've got to find out what his uh, skin, you know, skincare routine is. <laughs> I don't think, you know, well, this is a PSA from Mary Livingston that anyone who knows me well will know. I don't think Steve gets a lot of sun. So I think that is why he looks, you know. He looks as good as he does, and that's a warning to all of you. Please wear your sunscreen. Second gallery, two chases, 15 up. Uh, you too can, you too can look great. But <laughs> you know, I think um, I do think that that. What do you think? You know, yes, we have a small game, so yes, you know, there aren't quite as many younger guys um, love, pushing up you know, the same the way as maybe like the the bigger sports, but. What do you think it is about this game that allows some of the the older players to keep, love, to keep gallery. winning? Um, I think in I terms think of experience. Well, I, I do think that experience counts for yeah. a little bit more. Right. Um, you know, it, it's definitely. I think it's become in like a couple of different ways. It's sort of become more physical. Mm. Definitely the way like Camden plays the game, and like John plays the game. Like these guys are really fit. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I don't, the guys that were sort of up there, even when I was kind of starting, I didn't feel like they, perhaps they were quite as, you know, quite as, as fit as some of, some of the guys these days. I um, think that's a very diplomatic way to put it, AJ. <laughs> but um, okay. I, I also think, you know, Bob obviously is the prime example there's different ways to play the game well. Yeah. And, that, and that's what kind of makes it cool and makes it interesting. Shot. Game you know, and the Steve. match. Oh. Eight games to two. We didn't talk much about the match yet, but. <laughs> I think they, I think, you it know. It was kind of sliding towards that. It was sliding towards conclusion. an inevitable conclusion. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. And thank you. So just to get, keep everybody who's listening up nice, to speed, we have singles between Ben Stein and Robbie Whitehouse, right? Coming up next exactly. under the, the 2B. Um, ben Stein is representing Team Winning Gallery and uh, Team Dadon is represented by Robbie. And I think, I, is it one and one? Is it one? Didn't, because didn't Howell Bristow win? We're very professional Howell here on the, did, did the, win. the feeds. So it's, is it 1-1? So one, well, James just lost that one. So right, it's 1-1. One, one. Team, team Dead On won that first one, yeah. and then Leon won here. So I think it's, two, I think it's Team Dead On a 2 love up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> team. <laughs> I'm looking You're right at You're false hope. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a professional. I can't read. That's you know. But the one, one of the one of the, the great the great things about this format. I was is trying to convince him. We can say as one if you want to. You know, make this I was more trying to make it more exciting. I was trying a lot of things. I apologize. It all hinges on this one. For those of you following along at home, it does not hinge on this match. I apologize. Yeah. That, that being said, in this league format, this match could could be important because there's still you're playing for a, you know, so you're playing you, for a point. Yeah, on, on the, the on the wheel. yeah. So explain, give a bit of a primer on the on the, the sort of overall format, how the night versus <laughs> the night versus uh, the overall that uh, right. happens. So, yeah, so ben, you know your team name? each of these singles matches, you're just playing for one, one point, which goes okay. towards your team score. Okay. Gents, the doubles, is one which is obviously a slightly longer format, process is two points. Two. And then you're going to get three points the for the overall win. From your bracket. So, so you know, so, so, so 
am I actually uh, anyone anyone who knows me knows I've actually completely unafraid to ask really dumb questions but um, so does actually the, the head team of the, of the teams on any given night doesn't matter at all or yeah. it could so, uh, if, if we get to a stage where let's say for example you know Team Tamba who won this first match earlier with his first time I should right. say and Team Dead On, who are winning this match at the moment. Let's say they both Chase. end up with the same number of points in the end of play on Thursday. Then, then we go to that head-to-head. -head. Um, so so I, I, th I, think, I think this match, you know, although, it, although in, in terms of who wins this evening, it doesn't make a lot of difference. It could, it could so, so we're actually joined in the booth by Camden Revere, world champion. Um, the world champion in both the disciplines, of course, right? Doubles and right. doubles and singles. Do we think he can explain the format him. better than we can? <laughs> it's, Do you want to give this a shot? He, he, he cringed slightly <laughs> when I asked the question. <laughs> or you love one chase. <laughs> So, 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 Camden, was it your idea to do the draft, or was uh, it? I, I was on board with the draft, uh, for sure. I thought uh, it was a fun, different idea, yeah. different way to kind of get involved and, you know, let some captains, you know, not show favorites, but, you know, get to, get to design their lineups. So. Adding a bit of chance exactly. to the overall, the overall uh, scheme. Exactly. <laughs> mm, that's a good shot there by Robbie. So, so... So we were, yeah. So we were trying to explain a little bit of just whether it matters because who wins tonight versus who who everything, wins overall. So everything matters. So there, it's a it's an accumulation of all week. So each night you play a different team, and uh, basically you get points for every match you win, okay. and you get an overall you get points for an overall win. But every point matters, right? So even if you're going to lose. You want to win at least one match because that gets you at least a couple points. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. Um, so I believe the way it works is that uh, the 40, 30, singles the are worth one and the doubles is worth, say, three. Oh, and then we're not sure. And well. then you get, a, you get you know, a couple points for winning a match overall. So I think the most you can win is seven. Game. So, one game so seven zero would be. Uh, so the options are seven zero five two six and one. So right now, uh, good, good ooh, uh, Chase, four. right now, you know this match has been decided, right? Right. But there's still a lot of points to play for. It's the first match of the tournament, and uh, you know a two one overall score can one hundred percent bring you bring you to the top of the table. Right. So. Um. And this is this 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 harkens and back to the idea that we are being creative, yes. we are being inventive, yes. and we are um, well, and I, making we it work for us. I would say that I should know the point total system because we've been using it for almost 15 years in National League. The point system has been the same. Uh, so it's, actually it's just that now that we do it in three days rather than, yes. than across a whole season. Right. Okay, so here we go. So you get one point for a singles win, two points for a doubles win, and three points for an overall match win. Oh, so it is okay. So, it's for example, you know, and for those following along at home, this is good because they're not necessarily able to look at a program. Exactly. So, um, so Team Dadons has already won this this overall match, right? And they've won a doubles and a singles, so they have three points. So they essentially actually have six points right now because they've won overall. But there's one point still on the table, which is this match, and cool. you know it could come down to one point later on. Who knows? So. Yeah, nice job. And this it's is a good match. This is, it's great to see Ben Stein playing so well. Um, he obviously kind of showed up out of nowhere last year in our National League oh, playing. That is a tip. Played great in, in the doubles, right? But oh, this year 15. to get to see him play some singles, I think is fantastic. Oh. And he was a his his um, sort of he's sort of an obvious match for doubles because of the, his lawn tennis background, right? Right. And his um, volley and, and sort of um, court coverage abilities. Yes. Yes. Um, then I remember, you know, when that was suggested last year in terms of who the amateurs would be. Game. Um, Two games you know, to love. Some of the people thinking about who the amateurs that could really 
step up on the doubles court. Um, he's at the top of that list. He certainly is, certainly is. So, but it's nice to see him in the singles as well, because yeah. uh, you know he, he's he's a very yeah, handy singles well. player as well. So it's it's nice for him to get to show that off a bit here. Se oh, Sergio Lopez Ruiz. Oh, oh my goodness, do we know him, Camden? I think yeah, we know him. You know. I think we know him. Representing uh, <laughs> the Spanish court tennis the contingent. The Spanish court tennis contingent. So, so let's let's talk about some of the other games, Camden. Okay. Um, ball right, Rob? We don't have to talk about pickleball. <laughs> Nobody has to talk ball about right? I love pickleball. Right. 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 We can talk about pickleball if you want to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, you do love pickleball. I do. That's I do. heresy. Uh, well... I, I, it may be so, but it is what it is. Do you, I mean, do you just, it's just like I pickle. hitting it hard? I pickle. No, I think, uh, 40, so, 15. you know, court tennis and rackets are, are immensely difficult games. They like are. The learning curve <laughs> and the, the, the racket hand-eye required to play them is immense. Yeah. And so you kind of limit your field because it is so difficult. Whereas pickleball allows you to play racket sports and, and be involved with friends that you maybe never thought you would. Yep. So I'll use my wife as an example. She has never played a racket sport. She has, in the nicest way possible, absolutely zero hand-eye coordination. Um, and she'll admit it. But we if can go play know. pickleball together, mm. and she can get the ball back into play and have a good time, and we can enjoy ourselves. And so second, I do think sir. there is a place for racket sports like that. Um, but I do also understand the, the disdain. Oh, that's a great ball. So, so, but let's, so, and I thought of this, obviously, because Sergio did, did sign in. Um, but, you know, what do you think about Padel as the, oh. as the Goldilocks sport between the, the, you know, sort of lifetime chess game that is court tennis and um, pickleball on the other right. end? I think that, that Padel is, is, is more difficult than I think people yeah. It people is think, hard. yeah. I think it's yeah. uh, 30, 15, they make it chase. look very easy, right? And, uh, but I do think it is. It's not as simple as it, as maybe people think it's going to be when they walk out there. Um, I do think it's in a very good middle ground, as you mm. say, that Goldilocks zone of difficulty, but strategy, uh, playability to most people. Uh, it's also, I think, because of of its kind of roots in, in more of Europe and, and Spain and these areas, it's the way it's approached is a lot more fun and social mm. and there's kind of a lot of camaraderie involved in it. And that's fantastic because it, it, it is approached as a very kind of welcoming and fun game. Yep. And I think that, so even if you don't necessarily enjoy it or play that well, you feel as a part of a group that it's uh, quite fun. So. And I think, you know, I think the place it seems to be taking off the most of, and in terms of our our, ten, our court tennis group is Philadelphia. They seem to be playing a lot. Uh, a lot of our, you know, um, a lot of people seem to be playing it there. And so, I, th I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, I think, I do think more is more. And um, hmm. uh, it's it's Four fun. Games. But I think uh, the court tennis is not easy. <laughs> I mean, these guys make it look easy, but... Uh, Even I they, though, it's like... It's, it, certainly <laughs> um, it certainly is not. It certainly is not. But that's, apparently, that's why we like it. <laughs> it, it does, it's always always a challenge, for sure. Hmm. What do you... Um, in this court, what's your, what are your insights? Barney was talking a little bit. I asked him about serve and what, yep. what serves work on this court. Um, what, what do you think some of the Chase, big insights are two. playing playing at this club. So I think you know you have a lot of you have a lot of a uh, lot of height clearance. So I think you saw last match Leon using the high serve yeah. very well. Uh, Robbie trying it now. It's quite a grippy penthouse as well. Mm -hmm. Oh that's a fantastic shot. Uh, so the combination of those two things allow for high serving to work very well. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's a big court mm. and so you know it's easier to get the ball around people and, and through the court a bit more. Uh, and I think a lot of people will enjoy this. But I, to be honest, I think more people than not over hit the ball in court tennis. Mm. That's the trend. And so a bigger court allows more people. Their over hitting doesn't seem as bad because <laughs> it's a little bit longer, so they hit the floor a little bit more. And so I think a lot of people would come here Barney and think, never, uh, hits, right? never, never, never. Not uh, his brand. No, he's more classic. You know, more like Rob, <laughs> more like Rob Whitehouse out here. Uh, I mean, he did learn from him, so I'm not yeah. surprised. Uh, <laughs> Finesse game. To be honest, it's kind of amazing that Barney came from the Robbie Whitehouse school, given <laughs> the contrast. 
I have to wonder how those lessons went when he was a kid. <laughs> I know, and it, yeah. <laughs> and also, the other pros that would have been there were also pretty yeah. finesse players. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we know Barney's his own man. Oh. Um, 30, 40. What, which courts do you think, for anyone who hasn't played New York, what, which courts do you think it might be most equivalent to? Ooh, um, that's a toughie. I don't you've played, I mean, I think you are, even for, you know, even for a pro, you are particularly probably well traveled games. in terms of which games, which court to play on. Yeah, I've definitely games been games around too long. <laughs> um, um, I think it's quite tough to find a comparable court to New York okay. because um, it's, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, size-wise, it's similar to Tuxedo. Ball, Robbie. Um, but they play very differently. There isn't another court in the U.S. that has the grip uh, of the penthouse and uh, kind of around the court. It's quite a severe court by nature. Oh. Uh, so there's not much any in the U.S. that compare to it. Um, gosh. Thirty um, love. Yeah, it's, it's very. I think it's a very unique court. How's the floor play? Floor plays very nicely. I think it's um it's very well maintained. Mm. I believe it's a big league, yeah. and I mean like most of the courts in the U.S. So right. you know, we're, we're lucky in that regard. I think you know, I think most people in the world would agree that the big league process produced the best floors uh, that we've ever had, and uh, I just feel very lucky to have uh, ooh, gotten away with you know by living in the U.S. I think we're a little spoiled with that. No, that's interesting, and I think you know that is something that we forget, frankly. Oh, wow, um, great shot. And you know, you might go abroad and play one or two courts, and you sort of you think maybe they're the anomaly, and you don't really realize that actually we're, the we're luckily yeah. we're we're the anomaly, and we're in a good way. In a good way, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Oh. Um, Robbie with his first game point here. Let's see if he can convert it. Um, no, the, you get a lot of flagstone floors in the UK. Yeah. Um, these brick floors, a lot of different different makeups because they were done such a long time ago. And uh, it's fun to play on them, but it is it is different. That's for sure. Um, and I think ours are ours are definitely the truest and uh, kind of. Certainly they're 40, also, 30, to be honest, the most well maintained. Yards. I think mm. in the world, you know, we're we're very lucky with our clubs hit set up here in the U.S. that game. has allowed for courts to be well maintained. Oh, there it is, first One game. game to um, five. And so the Wiley know, veteran. He's, he wanted to. Play, he did say he wanted to play the endurance Ooh. game. He felt that, that was a great shot. He felt the longer <laughs> they were out there, the better his odds were. He kind of was mad about the eight games. He thought it was best of five, eight games, and uh, he was really, really. Upset when he found out it was one. Oh God! You know, it, one eight game. Well, he's got these, you know, he's got these knees that just go on forever. Well, they're metal. They never hurt. They're <laughs> fake. It's almost <laughs> cheating. Jeez. I mean, to be honest, is he? Well, I don't know why he's allowed in this event. He's not really human, is he? Fifteen love um, on And how? So, in all seriousness, who has more fake body parts, White House or Chisholm? And I think Chisholm's got one extra metal knee. Okay. But I think Robbie's swiftly catching up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think, w to be honest, I think we're all headed that way. Most uh, most court tennis pros, I think, are in line for at least that one knee and hip. That is bad squash, though. So this concrete floor is, so is not helpful. No. Not helpful. I think squash ends up with more hips, and I think yes. court tennis ends up with more knees. Okay. Uh, that sounds that sounds right. Yeah. Based, on, based on what I've observed. But for anybody listening that doesn't play, please come play. It's a great game. <laughs> it's a great we game. We promise. We promise. Oh, <laughs> Steve Hufford. Yes, Robbie is on the board. On the board. It's just needed a little momentum. Oh, it's losing it. Come on. Oh. 30 love better than three. Little emotion there. That's what we want to see. And who do we have marking? Is it uh, Young Pete Dick? No, who's this player? I think it is. It is Young Pete Dickinson. Okay. He's got that imitation Robbie. You know, he does. It's never as good as the original, but you know. Well, and, you know, and I find that slightly offensive because I'm from Rhode Island. Dickinson is from Rhode Island, and I really think that you know this this yeah. faux Philly accent that, that it's, Pete puts on, puts on only when he's marking. It's, be, it's because <laughs> he he learned from the you know the Robbie Whitehouse school of marking. Down. Which is. <laughs> Uh, very exaggerated. Ooh, oh, oh, great pickup. Drama queen. Um, a lot of drama. He's trying to, you know, I think Robbie is, won't admit it, but, you know, he doesn't like it when he's not the center of attention. And so <laughs> he wants to make sure that they know he's in that marker's box. He always, you know, 
He gets the hair done. He and Jimmy Burke, they used to always make sure they had the hair ready to go. A lot of emotion in the marker's box. Jimmy they step still out. Has hair, they step out. I don't know if you know, like, if you ever watch Robbie Mark, he leaves the marker's box more than any oh, marker I've it. ever seen in my life. And I'm like, Robbie, this isn't about you. <laughs> so, so we, so, so I will, I will say, I'm about to hand, hand it back over to Adrian, but um, Adrian and I were touching on some, um, you know, some truisms about professionals, and I think we could probably say, you know, loving the, loving the crowd attention is up there with maybe being able to complain 30, about things 40. not going their way from time to time as well. I, uh, yes, I think uh, <laughs> the love of the crowd is equal to the disdain of uh, <laughs> bad calls against you or oh, things like bad, that. Bad marking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we all we all know. I, I, I think actually my favorite Robbie marking ism is when he's. I, I saw it down, man. Yeah. I saw it down, man. <laughs> <laughs> saw that ball down. <laughs> saw it down. Oh, and he gets just this Jason, incredulous look on his face. <laughs> He's, he always walks out. He points to the spot. <laughs> saw it at two and three. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, so. No, it's great. He is, uh, he is he is a very good marker and deserves his reputation he as such. He I does. Think. He does. It's, uh, <laughs> I think he's. He loves being in there too. I always, you know, some guys hate marking, my, like myself included. Yep. I just don't like being you that do, well, stressed. You don't have to mark because you just keep. So is that why you win all the tournaments? Is no, because so it, you just have to. You're like, I don't want to be the losing guy who has to mark so, the next match. So actually, I should probably clear this up. So I actually, <laughs> I actually take a fine at every tournament for not marking. I've seen it on the sheet. Yep. Yeah, um, <laughs> so it's not that I, I, you know, think I'm too good or shouldn't have to do it. It's more that. I'm there to obviously focus on the event, mm -hmm. but uh, I also don't like the stress of, of being in there and like, you know, you don't want to make a bad call. And it, I used to mark a lot. And what happened is I uh, I didn't mark a match for so long that I, I really don't think I'm any good at it anymore. And so it then it's like a catch-22 because you should do it but to get better. But it's been so long since I've done it that I'm nervous to mark a pro match. Game ball, no, so. and, and, you know, and we, we obviously, obviously oh, we make fun of you. I've just, it's just been pointed out to me that no, I have to mark he, this. He's week. marking at 4 p.m., ladies and gents, who, oh, are, who are listening. And oh, and I'll be marking Robbie. 4 oh, p.m. tomorrow, Fantastic. Robbie versus Pete Dickinson. So that'll Tune be a fun in. one. Tune in for that. I um, will uh, do my best to do pull a Robbie. Oh, be. actually, and actually, Eight. honestly, people, we Six have him games, down also at the one. 4 p.m. match of Connor Six Medlow one. versus Tony Hollins. Wow. No emotions in that match whatsoever oh, for man. you to navigate. Man. Um, so I got I, to I, I talk to my team. <laughs> you got to talk to the team. And so people, <laughs> please team get this. Pull, make sure you're pulling the, the stream up on your, your yeah. desktop it at is work a, at 4 p.m. Both days. It's a once-in-a-lifetime one opportunity. <laughs> there, there are many people in this world that have never seen me mark, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but you know, but I think, but I think the more serious point that you're making is that marking is a skill. It is, a skill. and it's a skill. Uh, just like hitting the ball, it's yep. a skill that if you if you fall out of practice, you're out of practice. Yep. And you can't see it the same. You can't way. see it the same way. It takes time, and especially marking from the date on uh, takes takes a lot of practice. Yep. Seeing the different angles, and I haven't marked from the date on much at all. Uh, that's how long it's been since I marked when I right. was marking matches. We did it from the net right. still. Um, and so it is an acquired skill for sure. And uh, some of these guys, have, you know, like Robbie, have gotten very good at it. I think Adrian uh, is an amazing marker both from the back and, and the two. net. Yep. Um, I think he doesn't necessarily like to do it, but he's, he is very, very good at it. So... I, I've lobbied. <laughs> I've lobbied for him to do the next world championship. I lobbied for him to do the last one. He turned it down. Uh, well, no, yeah. and I, I think I, I, I have also heard the same. But Adrian's reputation is, is very, is very good, and you know, I think that it, it, there are, there are a lot of sub sub skills in our in this game, right? Where that we get to use. It's like it's not just like you know, you might be dominant on the court, you know. 40, for a long time, but there are other people who, whether it's the, the ball making, the marking, there's just so many sort of oh, skills that are allowed to kind of grow yes. alongside. Yes. And that's one of the cool things about our pro game. And frankly, and I'll and I'll wrap up on this and let let Adrian wrap it up with you. But like, it's one of the reasons again that we we want to invest in the pro game mm -hmm. and be so supportive because it's not just about what happens on court. Yep. It's about um, 40, what happens 30, off court, the coaching the aspect, the mm -hmm. ball making aspect, the marking, the self self refereeing um, yep. marking oh, aspect, yes. and it's all a uh, it's all about talent. And someone like Robbie, who 
you know. Oh, another game for Robbie. Yeah. He, he, uh, he still got some tricks, but but he still brings so he still contributes so much. Yes. yes. Um, with his experience, and that's and I think I just think that's pretty special. It is. It is. No, uh, I I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, on that note, I will pass it over to the incomparable Adrian, who's Ball. back to sit with our world champion. Here we go. I, it's, I apologize, everybody. I know it's been a few minutes since you've had nice, sultry English, you know, tones on the uh, on the thing. You had to deal with a couple of Americans. So we'll, <laughs> we'll get some accent back in here so that it, you know we've been losing numbers. The minute they see these American I know, accents, it's like, uh, but do, I said, doesn't he look like Chris Collinsworth in that suit? Oh wow, um, is that a compliment? Totally a compliment. Okay, yeah, he does then. <laughs> Oh, you don't know who? It, oh, oh and the, the, uh, you've been here long enough tall, to know who the that wide is. receiver, the tall oh. wide receiver that's on NBC football. Yes, you, you have met him. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in while we transition here. Uh, we've got a great and match going on. Robbie's doing his best to to battle against uh, an up and comer here, Ben Stein, on his home court. Um, you know, as I said before, Robbie was really hoping for that extended format, uh, but the eight game set, you know. He'll have to take it here. I, I feel like he's kind of come back into this match. He's Those first three or four games went pretty quick, and he's he's battling back. I think it's it's so of much engine. of it is, you know, I think Farabi's figuring out what he two. can do on the day and then how to use that to win points, right. you know. Uh, and obviously, like, the, the floor game is, is going to – do him better. I think he's he's started working the court a bit more. 30, 15, worse than two. Know, I don't think he's going to try and hit through Ben, or he should try and hit through Ben. Lost it to worse than three. Yeah. 40, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see Ben this year. For those who might have watched last year or, or came to the event, Ben was uh, just playing doubles. He had a slightly different kind of format in terms of the team and the setup. Second gallery. Um, the amount of season. flexibility you had in terms of like choosing who's going to play each match. Yep. This year we're going to see him, you know, play two singles matches, which I think is really exciting. Um, yep. His doubles has always been, you know, I think most people would say his doubles is kind of a strong suit. Right. Um, but he's, he's sure he can, you know, he, can, he can play singles second. as well. Yeah, it's great to see. It's great to, Ball. you know, because also, you know, we want, we, we need these amateurs to keep improving and, and kind of, showing their skills and I think you know if you hamper him just in doubles you know you just put him in that box I think it would hurt his singles and so it's nice to see him having to flex that singles muscle a little bit more right big point here oh oh I thought it was oh I thought it was fine oh wow yeah if you want to he I think it really is. Sort of thing everyone stopped there, but yeah. markers, you know, got to yeah. play to the marker. Got to play to the marker. Uh, I thought Robbie was going to give Pete the eye there and maybe he'd get the I, yeah, you I know, first serve. Especially as they're Boy, playing later 30, this week, I thought uh, maybe start three. a little little feud now. <laughs> there we go. That's what, I think that's what he's got to do if he wants to, to stay in this match. Right. Hard, hitting hard, boasting, hitting main walls. I think it's just not the answer. I think working that ball through the court like that, that into the corners. Receiver's that's, advantage. I mean, that's, that's a great shot chance. against anyone. Yeah. I mean, but especially Ben, who you know he's got such a good volley. He does favor. You know, yeah, he's not. And yet again, to everyone watching, he's not bad on the floor. It's just that sometimes you have to pick like the lesser of two evils when you're playing an opponent. And I think everybody could take a lesson Second from that. Is that it's not always Shane that everybody Gunn. has a glaring weakness, right? It's that something might not be as good as something else, but it also might give you more of what you like. Robbie likes to play the floor. So by cutting the ball into the corner, he encourages the rally to be more of Server's a, a kind Chase of floor type rally, gallery. which suits him. He may not win all of them, but it at least sets the stage for something that should be up his alley. Right. Uh, and so I think, you know, he's done a much better job lately Lost doing it. that. Oh, that's game. Three games to six. There we go. Just getting a little bit of momentum, especially in these, you know, in these kind of short matches. You sort of feel like the guy who gets ahead, it's tough to catch them, but oh. he did that. Yeah, it is true, especially in an eight game. You just don't have a lot of margin. Eight game format, if you come out slow, it uh, 
it's it's tough to tough to get back into it. But you know, maybe it could be that the oil in Robbie's knees has started to <laughs> kick in a little bit. <laughs> Jeez. We are better than second. And so Camden, what have you got coming up? After this, obviously you've got World Doubles got the world, later in the month yep, for you. World Doubles at the end of April. Where are you training for that? Uh, so up in Boston. Been uh, up there for about a year now. Going to uh, try to get down to hit with Mr. Chisholm and a little bit, give us some practice. Right. Two uh, but uh, obviously guys we've been doing it for a long time, so I'm yeah, not sure there's say, too much we're going to learn. Do you feel like you need to get some practice matches in before, or is it more... No. You sort of know you just hit your shots. Just kind of hit your shots. You, uh, you want to have your eye second. in for doubles. Obviously, this is a great uh, event for that for us. But it's, you know, I think for Tim and I very much, it's uh, we know what we want to do. We know, obviously, how to do it. We've, we've been there before. We've had success before. And it's just a question of can we can we come out and do that, you know? And, and uh it's gone well the last few Lost years, but you know, you just, like anything, it's always a challenge. You right. never know. Never know what's going to happen. There's some great teams, great teams there this year, and it'll be a fun, fun event. Yeah, I think everyone's, uh, you know, everyone's pretty excited Game. by the, uh, you know, I think Seven the format, which changed last time, you know, it took a little bit of betting in, but I think, especially with the teams that have come together this year, it's, it's a really. Uh, it's pretty pure. Fifteen uh, love. Yeah, I think the semis will be exciting as well as the you know as well as the final. I think there's oh, yeah. four good teams there. I don't think you know, any any match is, is predetermined in in this and uh, thirty love. You know we're gonna have to fight for for everything, which is how we want it to be. That's the whole idea oh. with the world championship. You want the best four best four teams. You know. Uh, and you have you spent some time out in Chicago because it's it's a little bit of a different court. I mean, I've played there a few times and. It is. I actually feel like it's very similar to. Oh. 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 I feel that it's very similar to Boston, where I'm playing right now. So it's, uh, you know, to be honest, I've, I've played on all these courts enough over the years to know what's coming and what to expect. Uh, doesn't mean I, I make the adjustments, <laughs> but I at least know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, here we go. 40, match point. 15. That is a, uh, that's a crucial point for winning gallery. That puts them at least on the scoreboard. They did not get blanked in, for day one. Right. Um, which I, feel, is, I feel like last year the, the margin between the teams was very close. You know, a point here or there. I remember I, I unfortunately was, for you, was stuck on your team last year. Uh, and although we won our doubles, I didn't do very well in the singles. And I remember I think one of... If I'd have won one of our matches, I think we would have we would have would have jumped up and, and yep. had a shot uh, of being in first place. I do think that, but I, you know, I think uh, the ability to select your own team is is great. Uh, you know, last year it was kind of like an assigned system, and um, you know, it's easy to like that when your team wins, but when it doesn't, you're you're kind of like, well, I didn't even have a say in this. Right. And especially when you know the format is so that you you can affect your team right like you you had the ability to win and get us through but you also have zero effect on the other matches being played right mm -hmm. so it felt um as much as we were a team it felt a bit more sterile like it was more hey every man for himself but oh we're going to total this up at the end whereas i think this year i i feel that the team camaraderie is is a higher because of the the draft and you kind of feeling like you were selected and like a part of a group right you know um at least that's how i feel for our team uh, you know I, I love our team. I feel like, you know, we're we're all rooting for each other. We're in there supporting each other. And, you know, I, it's great to see that that team aspect of it. Yeah, it's something, something we don't get very much. Um, yeah, and we obviously have Whitney Cup. We were talking about that earlier. That's you definitely have that team camaraderie there. Mm -hmm. But I think on the on the pro side, we don't have many events where no. you're actually you could be a doubles team. But other than that, like if it's not a match that you're playing in mm. pretty often, mm -hmm. There's, you don't have a lot of skin in the game. So this is kind yeah. of fun. And it is. And, and in addition, I don't know if people actually realize this. And we, uh, we also have a pro-am that's going on. Mm -hmm. And those pro-ams are in the teams as well. So there is a, a team tambour, a team winning gallery. And that, I think, has really added to the event because we play with those amateurs in the pro-am. 
and uh, you know we're trying to help them win the the pro am side of the event, and then they come in in the evening and cheer for us as a part of our team right. to encourage us on our side. So I really think that's been fantastic. Um, yeah, I to, agree. to add to it, just kind of combining and getting more people on board and ha really building that that team aspect, which has been really really fun. Yeah. Well, so. that kind of wraps us up for this evening. Um, it does. We've got action again tomorrow from four o'clock. Uh, as Mary was saying, Camden is marking that one, so. Four o'clock, be there. <coughs> you know, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. We nev we may never know if this is gonna happen yeah. again. And for, so. for those who aren't familiar with YouTube, you can like pause, you can slow-mo. So if any of those chase calls look a little dodgy, uh, yeah. please you know, just let us know. Feel uh, free to put the time in the chat. <laughs> and uh, we, we, were, we are happy to go back and review. Uh, maybe not my match when I'm marking, but the other matches, we're happy to go back and review the calls. <laughs> um, yeah, so full day of play tomorrow, four till nine. Um, There's going to be some howlers tomorrow. Uh, I, you know, well, first I was just up looking at your match, six twenty. Well, let's that's start I at the beginning. I mean, you've got Rob and Rob Whitehouse and Pete Dickinson. That is, you know, mentor versus mentee. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that'll be a fantastic match. You've got Bristow and Hollands. They were playing out in the, I believe it was like the semis of the uh, Below Zero yeah. earlier this year. So that's going to be a great a one. Howell and Smart versus Vergona and Dodgson in the doubles. That just has 6-5 in the third written all over it. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic match. And then straight after that, we have Lumley Stout versus Revere Tanfield. I think that I circled that one when the when the schedule came out. And I think both Tanfields, I think, all, I think they all well. did. I think Lumley did. I think <laughs> Stout and Tanfield have been making bets and doing different things in the shop. Mm. Uh, and then after that, we've got Med Connor Medlow and Noah Motes, which I think that'll be a great match to, to spectate. Yeah, I think Connor, Connor won't want to lose that. You know? He won't want to lose that. He's now, I think he, you know, today coming in a bit fresh first match. He hasn't played much lately. I think he'll have a bit more groove. I'm really interested in that. And then, uh, you know, finishing the day off is, is yourself against Ben. What do you, you know, real quick, if we have a second, I don't know if anybody's actually still watching here uh, or listening here. But, uh, you know, how do you feel about that? Um, Especially having just seen it. I know he looked pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I think Ben's always fun to play against. Hmm. And uh, we, we've we played a few times kind of friendly, hmm. you know, friendly matches, lessons kind of along the along the past few years mm -hmm. and uh yeah it'll be very interesting to see i yeah. think if he comes out and the the problem is we both like a fair amount of chaos in the game hmm. so no one likes chaos as much as you except well, maybe me i love i love some chaos out yeah, there chaos but i think you good. uh you love creating chaos yeah that is for sure um, um so i think it'll be entertaining i i i think uh there probably won't be that many sort of regular court tennis shots there'll be a lot of scrambling <laughs> a lot of you know unusual stuff going on so right. maybe not one for the purest but hey hopefully um the best ones never are uh, hopefully know. it'll be uh, i think it'll be fun it'll be great well we've got a whole day of great tennis tomorrow thank you all for tuning in uh we hope you've enjoyed day one of the uscta national league super event here at the the racket and tennis club in new york and uh, we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow have a great evening